And we are live. What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the new space, which is basically a blank canvas right now. Not a whole lot going on until uh, the IKEA order I placed. I mentioned last week I ordered a bunch of, of like backdrop furniture -y stuff, but there's no IKEA in the state of Idaho, and the quickest delivery was mid March. So it's going to be a pretty boring set for the next month, but we're moved in. Hopefully, everything sounds okay, everything looks okay. On the computer side, nothing has changed. I am currently using a loaned modem router from the ISP because we, when we had the two, like rental and this house, I didn't have two sets of modem and router, so I, I'm using there. So hopefully it's up to the task of at least streaming for this week and next week, but hopefully everyone's doing great. Again, happy Wednesday, happy Valentine's Day. Um, I completely, I didn't forget it was Valentine's Day, but uh, Aaron and me are going out we never do anything usually on the actual holidays because it's just madness everywhere. But Friday, we're going to go out before my parents fly home on Saturday uh, to, to go out to like dinner since we hardly ever do that, especially now that we have a, a almost one year old. So uh, who's here today? We can't hear you. Congrats. Wait. OK, man of the croc has to be joking because I feel like more people would be saying audio seems like it's fine. New space, new canvas, channel can only go up from here, <laughs> hopefully. Hi Deanna, hi Nice, RS is here, Phil's here, PF's here, Elizabeth. Uh, you seem to be lost in the white void, yes. <laughs> it reminds me of, I think there's a scene in the original Bruce Almighty uh, where he goes to this room and there's like this never ending file cabinet. And it's just a white room. I kind of feel like that's where I am right now. Okay, sounds fine. Audio is okay, sorry, I can't lip read. Audio is good. Huh, so some people are saying, I can't lip read. We can't hear you. Audio shows fine and most people seem like it's okay. I don't know, maybe refresh. I, it's weird that there's two people saying audio is not sounding right. Ah, oh, okay, all right, okay. I'm pulling my leg, I like it. <laughs> Beard is looking a little scruffy as well. <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> coming from bearded bucket. I, I need a haircut, it's what, the hat's on. This is the longest my hair has been probably in years. I just, the, how I look has been the last of my concern. Like, I can't, you can't really see it, but like, here's my leg. I've got paint and dirt. I was, uh, the backyard here is completely on, like no landscape. It is just dirt. And uh, we did that intentionally because I just don't know how I want things. But we quickly discovered that a little bit of rain combined with dirt and two dogs is a terrible idea. So. Uh, yesterday and the day before, I got a bunch of the weed barrier stuff. So I've been crawling around in the mud, hammering or stapling down a uh, landscape barrier. And there's like, you, you can't really see it. Uh, well, you guys definitely can, but there's like 14 cubic yards of rock in our driveway that we've been wheelbarrowing and wagoning into the backyard. So it's been, <laughs> it's been a lot. So, uh, yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, as a little bit of a, I guess I'll, a little preview of what the set is going to look like. So this space is essentially twice as big, at least twice as big as the room we were in before. So the game plan is uh, to get another workbench that's going to be on this side. So that way I can have multiple projects going on at the same time, which should be really helpful. One of the biggest struggles I've had with uh, maintaining the video schedule on the main channel is like I'm working on a project for a video and then there's printing involved. And even with our quick printers now, a lot of the prints can take many, many hours and so I'm sort of like hitting print, leaving the printer and I can't do anything. So by having a secondary workbench slash work area in the same studio, I should be able to then while that's happening, go work on the other or next part of it. At least that's the idea. So um, goal is to have another workbench there and then this area is gonna look really similar to what it looked like in the previous studio. It's gonna have the same kind of pegboards, uh, but there will be a lot of, sh um, they're the, we've talked about this many times, the Ikea uh, Alex drawers, I think is what they're called. So those will be here with lots of different nuts, bolts, and all of the things we use for builds. And then there's gonna be a bunch of the Ikea Billy shelves behind the second set, and that's going to be where all the filament is. So. It will be awesome, but for right now, it's just going to be just a workbench and white background for the next little bit here. Hey Sven, uh, you should take us for a tour. There's, I wish I had, I, I, I'll have to see if there's a way, oops. I'll have to see if there's a way to 
do something. I, I know that I can use, there's a thing called uh, Video Ninja, v, Ninja Video, something like that, where I can use my phone as a camera source in OBS, so then I would be able to kind of show around. Um, I mean, like right now, I'll show, I'll give a quick little, uh, let me see, let's go side cam. So I'm upstairs, uh, I'm upstairs, which is new. I've never done video work upstairs. Uh, biggest downside of being upstairs is moving things. Uh, this, this, let's see this um, desk, my primary desk, me and my dad carried it up the stairs and it was like 140 pounds, super awkward and it was inc incredibly stressful. Uh, so that's definitely the biggest downside. But the upside is is the upstairs is completely closed off. So it's, it's uh, let me show you guys, this is how it looks. So it's, it's completely owned. Um, it was a loft that's converted into what's called a, a, I think it's a junior suite is what they call it. So completely enclosed, it's got its own door. It actually has its own AC, which is awesome uh, because one of the things I've complained about a lot during live streams is me sweating like crazy. So a lot more space here. And then uh, we've got a big old walk-in closet over here, which is awesome currently. Currently it's where all, I don't have to yell, the mic's on me. Currently this is where all of the sort of filament is until the shelving comes in that I can saw it on. You can't see this, but there's a big rack of just stuff over here. So there's a lot of space. There's also, um, which is kind of cool for, there's a, this, that door over there is a restroom. So it's got a full bathroom up here as well, um, <laughs> which is great for when I'm working on projects. So yeah, that's pretty much it for right now. I'm, I've just taken the workbench up here. I've mounted the TV so that way I've got chat. And then that's really all I've done so far. It's very similar. Uh, it's very similar to, the layout right now is almost identical to the previous one, just more space, which is nice because it was so cluttered before. Dinner time, enjoy your dinner, Jose. Um, OBS will work with any IP cam, just point. Oh, that's cool, okay. Yeah, the garage is a complete mess right now, but it will be, we'll definitely do a garage hangout slash stream. I don't know how I'll do it. I might need to stream off of a laptop, but uh, we're gonna be building a Milo at some point here. And I think that makes more sense to just assemble in the garage. So I'll have to look into that. Don't drop small screws on the carpet. Yeah, even the garage, the garage is epoxied and I dropped a screw and it's impossible to find <laughs> screws on a speckled epoxy floor as well pooping sound during the stream <laughs> so okay let's let's get into it then i mean how's everybody doing we're gonna pick up where we left off the only thing i've done since last week's stream was at the very end you know what i can't exactly see <clears throat> i need to be able to see what's in focus a little bit easier that probably will work the only thing that i have done is Last week we left off with mounting the X axis or the X carriage and I had not routed the X end stop wires correctly. So I took this off basically just undid the four bolts that attach it to that linear rail and then routed them through. There's a pocket. Let's see. There's, I don't know how well it'll even pick up. Uh, IP cams have a small delay. Yeah, that should be fine for the sake of just showing a tour of some of the other areas of the house though. Um, the the end stop wires go through the hole that's right here where this this uh inductive probes at so that's the only thing i've done uh, the first thing we're really going to be doing today is getting the x z belt routed which is always my least favorite part of the build <laughs> i don't know it's just my my fingers i, I always struggle with belts so well, one thing I did want to point out is that the belt I'm using is not the belt included with this kit. This is uh, from Triangle Lab that I ordered off of AliExpress a couple of weeks ago. And the reason for that isn't because the belt provided with this kit is bad. The reason is that if you remember, or if you watch the stream, when we were doing the Y axis, I, I cut the belt based off of what the millimeters were called out in the official guide. And that was not correct. So I cut too much belt, didn't have enough belt left over to do both X and Z. So I quickly ordered additional belt. So you'll be fine as long as you don't do that. And 
uh, pull the belt so that way you make sure you're just using the correct distance and not cutting an excessive amount that's gonna get wasted, so. So for right now, all I'm gonna do is sort of loosely route the belt, one of them, so I know how much distance I'll need, which is what we should have done with the Y. And then I will match that and we'll cut, uh, we'll cut a second piece of belt to match that. So for now, we're going to tuck this belt down here. It feels really weird being in a different place. I know like the layout is the same. Also, this kind of, this kind of sucks to feed through. Maybe I'll do, let's try this side for now. <clears throat> yeah, it feels very weird. Like all my tools and stuff that are normally right behind me are kind of hidden still in boxes. So I'm sort of making do with, with you know, the current setup, but it's been a little bit trickier to do things. Hey, Vinny. Okay, so let's just pull a little bit of belt through, hopefully. There we go. And then I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of belt. So this is, I don't know, an extra inch and a half roughly. And I'm going to just tighten this down. So that way it's not moving. And all I'm gonna do is route the belt how they need to go. So this is on the outside. I believe. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, Maurice, thank you for seven months. Cheers. Uh, do some air horn action. So we'll just do a quick route. Sometimes I don't even route it exactly correctly because we're just doing this again to get as close of a measurement as possible. But I'll do I'll do a decent job here. Uh, kids both woke up early and wife demanding coffee. <laughs> what time is it where you're at, Phil? Alright, so this is going through here. This needs to go over here. Then I think it needs to go up through here. So we'll just pull this, pull this through here. Ooh, I will say, since the, uh, since the embargo is lifted, I do have a... Magneto X, the Pia Poly machine. Um, I haven't gotten probably as much time, I don't think I've gotten nearly as much time as anybody else with it just due to the fact that I've been moving. So all I have is sort of my initial impressions, which is that the thing is built like a tank. The, I, it, the one I got was a beta unit. So they sent me a new, Lo a load cell board and a few other things I have to update, but I'm hoping to be doing some printing with it this next week here. So now that it's not a secret hidden thing, even though it wasn't really super secret hidden, but um, now that it's it's something that's available and open, we at some point can do a stream and just kind of chill and print around with it, which will be fun. Uh, they say it's the 1700 hour somewhere. I feel like I routed this incorrectly, but I don't think that it matters. I, th I think I needed to have the teeth the other direction because it's gonna be wrapping around the motor, but for what I'm doing, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I'm, lo I'm looking right here and this needs to wrap around the belt and the orientation I have, it means that the teeth are gonna be facing away from the belt. I'm sorry, the, yeah, the teeth are gonna be facing away from the pulley. But for what we're doing, it doesn't really matter, but it, it definitely will matter in a second here. Um, let's grab a little Allen key. And of course the belt wants to bend the other way. Fun stuff. Okay, maybe if I go like this and then pull it through, that's probably the easiest way to do it. It's five o'clock. Oh, five. It's five a.m. Wow, it is early. Where where are you at, Phil? Exactly. Like what what country? So again, this belt is backwards, um, which is okay in our case because we're just trying to get a 
trying to get a measurement. Maybe if I go like this, I can do it. So we've got this last thing is defeated over the last idler. It's tangled. I, I know it's tangled, but whoa, uh, was that? I couldn't even see that happen so quickly. Um, PF, thank you very much for the 10 gifted memberships, man. Cheers. I'm going to get, I'm going to get some new sound, some new sound effects. Once I'm settled in here, we need some more. Thank you very much for the support PF. Yeah, that's that's tangled okay so going through here and giving us a little bit of extra slack i would say right around here is plenty so let's get these flush cutters i don't know where my scissors are okay so all we're going to do now is undo this cut our second piece of belt to match it in length and then we can then we can wrap this. Where somehow, somehow I've misplaced. Somehow I've misplaced the one driver. That doesn't even. Oh, there it is on the ground. I was like, how? How does that happen? Hey, Jim. Uh, twenty-one fifteen in the UK. So what is that? That's. 10, no, 22 would be 10, so 9, 9.15. Okay. Undoing the screw. Okay, belt is nice and loose. Perfect. All right, so I'm just gonna grab the belt that's on the ground. <clears throat> We're gonna interlock the teeth. We'll start with, so the one that I just cut is gonna be one tooth higher than the one that we're going to be cutting. Okay, so the one we're cutting needs to be one tooth lower, right there. Okay, so this should be extra, which I, I bought this belt initially, was it, it wasn't purchased because of the mistake I made. I just had happened to purchase some belt, but I purchased it for the ERCF. So hopefully we still have enough. I imagine it's not gonna need very much belt. And we've got our two belts. Here we go. Uh, I missed the start. <laughs> I've been too busy. What are you working on? Uh, coffee. The Milo is not going to be a mod builds collab. It would be fun. Steve and I have talked uh, a fair bit throughout the last six months or however it's been since we finished the uh vz bot build and we definitely want to do 
I got sneeze coming on. We definitely want to do another build. We're just trying to figure out what he's, he, he streams a lot longer than I do. And so he knocks out builds a lot quicker. Also, he gets less distracted than I do. <laughs> and um, we have a few things that we've sort of discussed, but yeah, I think Milo, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he's starting on that really soon here, like next. And uh, based off what I heard when I talked to Jason over at LDO, it sounds like my kit's probably coming towards the end of March. So with his, with how quick he builds, I think he'll be milling by the time my kit arrives, probably. So maybe a uh, form bot Micron. Micron would be pretty cool. You get distracted, right? Big, big surprise. Uh, amount for the CYD display on my Ender 5 S1. Nice. Um, have you had a boxing match with the power supply in this build? No, no punching. I've been keeping the power supply in the box, so it's not in harm's way. Uh, if I'm gonna remember, if you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. Let's see if we can get to, let's see the 112 people. Let's see if we can get to 100, 100 likes. All right, so let's check this out. Pretty much, I was looking earlier today, and what we've got left is route belts, do stealth burner, and then route, uh, do all the electronics. So we're making progress. We are making good progress, which is nice. Let's go up to the belt section here. Okay, so we got that. It says uh, the motor mounts have built in tensioners. Slightly loosen these screws before adjusting the belt tension, fasten them again after. Okay, so let's do these things. Has the house had any encounters with your knuckles yet? No, I've, I've, uh, I've been quite careful. The only things I've even done so far is, um, let me see, there we go. The only things I've done so far is I mounted the TV this morning, uh, which was my first time drilling into like a room here. Everything, nothing's been really hung up so far. And then I, uh, I installed a floodlight camera um, above the above the garage door and that was interesting because I had to drill all the way through from the outside to the inside of the garage and I had to go purchase a 12 inch drill bit which is by far the longest drill bit I've ever operated I when I purchased it and I went to go drill I'm like I I hope this doesn't turn out horribly but I, I took my time prior measuring it to make sure I wasn't going to be bumping into the garage hardware and uh it turned out really nice, but I was, I had a moment of, oh crap, here, here it goes. You know, like this, it was a, I want to say it was a three eighth inch drill bit and 12 inches long, which is, which is, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Blake. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're, um, we're super excited. It's, it's, it's weird. It still doesn't feel real. Like it's our place We're we're, uh, I went around and, and removed everything from the walls in the last place and I spackled and then I went down and got some um, uh, a paint match done so I just need to do some painting and then cleaning of the old place which I'll try to do soon here okay so we did that we slightly loosened the screws on the left turn the screw clockwise to pull a higher tension on the belt which we don't want to do right now also sorry in advance my allergies are a little bit on the fritz today uh, turn the screw clockwise to pull higher tension on the belt. Okay, so again, we don't want any tension on the belts when we first install them. So let's see, we'll go the opposite of clockwise. Well, this is clockwise again here. I just basically want to make sure. Okay, so that's pulling up. It is tough to perfectly bottom these out. That looks close to, looks close to bottomed out. <clears throat> yeah, monster drill bit. It was uh, <laughs> probably the only time in my life I'll use that drill bit, and it was the eighteen dollar drill bit. But I, you, when you're drilling through your house, like <laughs> to that extent, you you, you don't want to go with the the discount drill bit. So I went with the quality drill bit. But yeah, I don't know what the heck I'll ever do with it again. Hey, Jack. <clears throat> Yeah, we went down, uh, my, my dad and we went to Home Depot yesterday to attempt to get another one of these workbenches and 
they do not sell them in store, which is bizarre. And online just says out of stock with no date coming back. So I don't know. I'm going to wait a week, I think, and see if this uh, workbench, this is a DeWalt. Nope, it's not DeWalt. It's a Husky workbench. If it comes back in stock, great. If not, then I'll probably just go with a different. I, I wanted them to match, but it's not that big of a deal if they don't end up matching. So uh, basically, for anyone watching this, we've got this is loose. So um, these this whole bracket that's held in with these two bigger, um, I think they're M5 bolts. These are loose and then this is completely bottomed out. So the belt, let me see here. So if I turn this, it will push this, you oh know, bracket needs to go, I think I'm, oh, I know what's happening here. I know what's happening here. So because I installed the mod, the, this, this whole assembly is not sliding the way it should be. So if you didn't install this, this motor mount mod like I did, you'll be fine. But since I did, um, I need to loosen these because this is also an anchor point. That's not the right size driver. There we go. So now it has the ability to slide up and down in tension. So I'm glad I remembered that. So yeah, that's nice and loose. And I need to now do the same thing on the other side. So yeah, you want, these are slotted uh, down here. Let's see, these are slotted. And so before you do any of this, you just wanna make sure that it's as low, it's, this whole bracket is as low as it can go. So that way when you tension it and it starts to raise up, wait, am I saying this incorrectly? Raising up would be less tension. Raising up would be less tension. Regardless, <laughs> regardless, you want it loose. It needs to be able to pivot because as we tension it, if it can't shift, the tensioning isn't going to work properly. Pull all the tension, pull all the, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna apply tension on the belt directly. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> uh, did you see the black box? Looks like a nice build. Yes, I have been looking at the black box. It's a gorgeous looking build. Okay, so I think now... Why is this not sliding the way I think it should be? Hmm. I'm just looking at this one more time. These are loose. And it says clockwise will pull it higher, which, why are we? The thing I'm not sure about, let's see, raise bracket up. But don't you want the bracket down initially? I guess that does make sense then. Okay, so it's the op <laughs> it's the opposite of what I said. Because if it's up, the way the belt's routing, pushing this bracket down is gonna pull the motor further away from the belts and cause more tension. So it's the opposite <laughs> of what I said. So let me just keep on loosening this until this basically bottoms out, which is right about there. Okay. And I'll do the same on the other side and then we can route the belts. Tighten it as high up as it goes when routing. Uh, no, it will pull it higher directionally, right? It makes the tension higher. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it now. I had it. <laughs> I had it reversed. <laughs> so everything I said was was incorrect regarding direction. So I still do believe I want it loose um, because when I pull it, it's going to basically raise it up, and then I'll be able to pull it away to tighten it down. So. It should all work out. The key thing is, again, have everything loose and have this guy bottomed out, essentially. Yeah, leaving all of the slop for tensioning. Hey, monkey. Yes, very, very beige wall. I think they called it, it's a white, it's a white wall, um, which I like. It does, it looks nice with the light. Like if I go, I was pretty happy when I first turned it on. I was like, ooh, it's kind of got like a nice little shadow around it. I'm sad. I, I'm not gonna be able to put this this sign back up for like 30 days because it's going on it's going on a bracket or on a um, pegboard type thing that like we had at the previous place that'll be behind here. So I don't know 
it's a little bit, it's really bland, the background. It makes me a little sad, but it's temporary, so. Eggshell. <laughs> hey, Nappin. All right, let's start, let's start routing some belts now. But yeah, black box looks really cool. I would love, to, this year we're building a tool changer. I just don't know which one yet. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just don't know which one. It's been something I've wanted to do for a while. I think it'll be fun for experimenting with different filaments and such on the channel and streams, like on the main channel and on the streams. I just don't know if it's gonna be a black box, if it's going to be a, uh, a step, what is it? Tap, tap changer, the stealth changer, whatever. The, I don't know what the latest version of it's called or something different altogether. All right, let's look at this together. Belt position, adjust the position of the pulley if required. Heavy contact with the flanges will introduce artifacts into your prints. Take your time and make sure your belt is, uh, routing is as intended. Belt should never rub on plastic parts. So we'll start with the Z belt. And Z belt looks to be, looks to be the inner belt on this picture. Let's see. No, it's the inner inner belt. Yeah. Okay. So uh RS makes on phone can't tag. I love that for a background. Duct tape it, duct tape it. <laughs> I'm I'm really against taping things to walls now because even even when we uh one second here let me make sure i get this direction correct so if this is going like this on the inside and it's going like this no inside's going here okay so we'll start with this guy on the inside but yeah, even when I was doing the garage, I used specifically like blue painters tape that was supposed to be easy tear off. It, it pulled off paint in like eight or nine sections of the wall. So if that did that, I'm scared to tape anything on walls. This is a really awkward, it's a really awkward. I almost wish that I had routed the belt or like started the belt before I attached this on here. It's really weird. Uh, use some blue tack and avoid the holes. What is blue tack? VHB in the wall. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did actually VHB a few things at the rental, and uh, it didn't turn out quite as bad in the removal process as I had expected. But yeah, I, I don't recommend it. This is awkward. Um, I wish I had tweezers if I use a small Allen key. The the inner belt is directly under directly under the extrusion, which means it's no fun. There we go. I think that helps as long as I've got. There we go. Maybe. There we go. Okay, now just to make sure that the teeth are supposed to be going that direction. So if this is going over this, and then down, no, I think I'm doing this incorrectly. So I'm doing the X belt. Let's see, so from where I'm going, this needs to go there. <clears throat> Duct tape is for permanent installation. Ahoy! Hey, Dom. Let me look at my, oh, the switch wire is not here. The switch wire used to be right behind me. So if this is on the inner. It needs to go down. So 
So I do think I'm doing this incorrectly. <clears throat> Teeth point up under the extrusion. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, I was doing it incorrectly then. Try it again. Hey, Ted. Okay, so teeth are facing towards the extrusion, not away from the extrusion. We'll do the same thing again. Grab our little Allen key that I somehow set down incorrectly again. Oh. Where did it go? Oh, this guy. I feel like there has to be a better way to do this. Oh, I wonder, oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, sweet. So I'm going to tighten this just a little bit, at least for now, to keep it from shifting around on me. I'll end up having to loosen it when we get to the other. I almost wonder, if both if both belts are going the same direction, I almost wonder if I should feed in the second one. Um, how are you doing? Doesn't look like the old space. Yes, we are officially in the new space. There's still so so much to do, um, but I think it's gonna take many many months. But like everything is basically over here. There's a few like random odds ends at the rental still that we need to clean up, but the majority of things are here. And it was relatively smooth sailing, actually. The, the I broke one thing. Um, it was the entertainment center in the living room. Let's just see if we can do both. Um, the entertainment center in the living room has glass uh, for a couple of the shelves. And I put them on the ground to keep them safe, which I, you probably note to self, don't put things on the ground that you want to keep safe, but I did. And when we were moving something that wasn't very heavy, I happened to push it into, <clears throat> I happened to push the thing into one of the panes of glass with enough force that it pushed that pane of glass into another pane of glass that then shattered that pane of glass. So my parents are in town. Um, they've been absolutely like angels when it comes to helping with moving. And they are currently at a glass shop getting a piece of glass cut out. Dom, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships, man. Cheers. That's air horn. Thank you, thank you. I opened a roll of ASA filament thinking I need to use it to finish the print, but I think I have enough left on the roll. Wait, what? I opened a roll of ASA filament thinking I'd need to use it. Oh, gotcha. I, I, so you didn't need to open it at all. You're saying you had enough filament. <laughs> What's new with you, Dom? Hey, Andre. Okay, so these should be nice and snug. And I think, I, I didn't count teeth. I did not count teeth, but based off of just feeling and, and measurement, <clears throat> I believe I fed the exact same amount of belt through. So the, it's it looks like it's exact. So hopefully that means tensioning will be easy because I can just sort of pull the teeth through to make sure that they're equal. Well, at least do my best. I could have left it in a sealed bag, that's funny. Well, at least it's ASA. Um, I know, I was talking to Steve and Steve said he was having, or he's had quite a few issues with ASA not being dried, like if he doesn't dry it or keep it sealed, but I, I, I don't know if it's location or different, uh, different manufacturers, but I've had ASA open for long, long periods of time and I haven't had any issues with it, so hopefully you won't run into issues. Knock on wood, that is. Um, I picked up a MK3S Plus and MME2. Wow, 300 uh, pounds. Gotta love people offloading old machines for new ones. Where, what is, um, you're in the U UK, I believe. What What is the primary method locally that people get rid of printers? Is it is it like Facebook Marketplace? 
All right, so we're gonna start with the inner belt. So we're going over, oops, that's not right. We're going on top of this pulley or idler, I suppose it's not a pulley. Pull this straight through. Then we are going around. I got a roll of Elegoo ASA and it was garbage before I dried it. Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's based off of the raw uh, pellets or like the raw base material used. Some of them are more hygroscopic than others. Or again, if it's location, I really don't know. I get the brittle PLA. I do get the brittle PLA as well. Um, if, I, if I leave PLA loaded like in a Bowden configuration or a reverse Bowden setup, all of the PLA typically that's like right where it meets the Bowden tube, it almost always breaks. Like you can you can stare at it and it, it will break. Um, I don't get, I get brittle. So I picked up on eBay. Oh wow, okay. I don't want to use Facebook Marketplace, but my siblings that do have found really good deals on printers on it. Gotcha, eBay, wow, yeah, uh, you're doing the right, looks like you, are you doing this right, looks like you crossed the belts. Uh, I think I'm doing this right. Inner belt going down, should be right. We'll take a we'll take a closer look at it in a second here once I've got it right a little bit. Zombie, thank you for the $1.49 and the banana. Okay, so I'm gonna use an Allen key to help me route this belt. We might need to loosen the, we might need to loosen the idlers as well. I'm sorry, the pulleys. We might need to loosen the pulleys and align them. I tried my best to align them based off of the, one second here. I think it might be easiest if I go like this and then pull it through. I tried my best to align it based off of the documentation, but I'm not convinced it was correct. So we'll find out. Okay, yeah, that looks right. So Zombie, I've got a question about your K1C. Anyone that hasn't been following, or if you're not on X or Twitter, and you haven't been following the saga of Zombie Bot, I think, so Zombie got a K1C, and I think it was not a, not a review unit. This definitely crossed, okay. <clears throat> One second here. Inner belt, yes, that's correct. That goes like that, then this goes like that. Yeah, we're gonna have to move, I think, that get in the bottom. <laughs> I know that you've been going through, <laughs> you've been going through a whirlwind with this printer, but I'm curious about the story behind it. I think I routed this correctly, but we will in a moment here, take a look at it and verify that. Make zombie relive the terrors. <laughs> it's easier to make a loop. Yeah, it, it definitely is easier to make a loop. Let me bring you guys up so you can see what it wants to go through. Um, I think it's just turning. Let me try it again with an Allen key. Uh, just so you know, for the future, uh, if the value is the same, wait, if the value is the same, would you rather I send it to you using the same amount of value gift membership? Oh, I, I don't, whatever, whatever you prefer, Dom. I don't really know as far as like YouTube's breakdown in terms of which one they take more of or any, anything like that. So yeah, whichever, any, any support via memberships or donation is all appreciated. So whatever is easiest for you. I, I don't, I don't really know again how YouTube slices and dices everything. I wish I knew at a minimum the extruder is bad. I had to pull out the CR10SE and that's the that's printing much better than the K1C. Uh, to me, it just feels a little bit rushed. Hopefully the max version will be better. Was it, is my understanding though, that was not a review unit? That's a unit you purchased? Okay, so for right now, I'm just going to, I'm gonna leave this side loose. 
There's enough belt here that I'm not really concerned about it falling out. This belt's routed, but we're gonna leave it loose until I've got the second belt ran. Uh, where I live, it's somewhere. Where I live, it's somewhat humid. I even have to dry ABS once in a while. I just had to dry a roll of Polymaker ABS yesterday. It was brittle, just like PLA. I also stored it in a bag with desiccant. Wow. I mean, I will say, like, I'll never knock anybody for drying any material. Like, if you want to dry all of the materials, that's totally fine. I don't think you'll have any negative impact unless you dry at extremely high temperatures and, you know, then you might run into other issues. But yeah, for me, from the beginning, I've never dried PLAs, I've never dried ABSs, and I don't think I've dried ASAs, but I've dried plenty of PETG, I've dried plenty of TPUs, all the nylons, all the PVAs, uh, and a handful of other materials as well. I live on a strip between the desert and the ocean, so it's either hot and dry or cold and damp, depending on the season. I have to vax. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like a recipe for a, not a good time for filament. Hey, Jermaine. I pre-ordered it. Okay, gotcha. Was it easy? Was it easy? Like, what was the return process like? Uh, this crossed over. You need to be over here. How's Jack, Jack, and Darren doing? Bad risk and move. I live in the desert, still have PLA problems, but not really anything else. Interesting. Uh, Dom, thank you for the two pounds. How's Jack, Jack and Aaron doing? Bad wrist and uh, bad wrist move. Yeah, Jack, Jack's doing fantastic. He is, he is thriving. He is turning, he's turning one in on the 5th of March, which is just crazy. Uh, he's super, super, he's getting taller. I, I feel like he's, I'm very curious to see when we go to his next checkup, which is for his one year, at what his current height is, because I feel like the kid is just like, like he's just so tall and it feels like he keeps getting taller. So yeah, he's doing awesome. He's been doing some new silly stuff uh, since my parents have been here. Like he, <laughs> he really likes music and my mom has been putting on a bunch of sort of classical music and he kind of just, he really is into bobbing his head and like making like a click sound with his mouth when there's music. It's, he's, he's just, he's a goofball, man. But yeah, he's doing great. Aaron's doing good as well. She's, um, I think she's getting settled into everything. There's still, like I said, a lot of figuring out where things are going to go and all that. But all in all, like I, it just, everything's going to take some time to sort of get caught up, but um, she's doing good. And her wrist, her wrist is, I think, back to perfect health. She at least hasn't mentioned it since, she hasn't mentioned it in a while, which is, which is a good thing, I think, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you for asking. If I call correctly, between Nero and CV2 takes the same percentage for, oh, gotcha, yeah. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they take the same amount. Also, sick, I forgot, it's a new month, which means I can gift memberships. How do I do this? Memberships, I think I get 10 per month. Membership gifting. Um, you have 10 memberships. Sweet. It worked. Plot test, Jack Jack likes EDM. <laughs> he, he hasn't figured out how to walk yet, but he has been shuffling around the house. <laughs> that would be, God, that would be funny. He was like, yeah, this is my son. He doesn't walk. He just shuffles everywhere. <laughs> um, little headbanger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we don't cut his hair, he'll uh, it'll be really funny, actually. Or even for for like Halloween to get him a little a little wig or something and put on some metal music and have him headbang. Okay, this looks good. I think I've ratted things correctly. I'm gonna pull this second belt through now and then we will critique my wiring, or not my wiring, my belt path and make sure it didn't screw up. <clears throat> Gifted membership, thanks for the subs. Yeah, did you get one zombie or you already had one, right? Uh, Brent got one, awesome. Jack got one, or whoever got, I don't know. It looks like, yeah, Jack, Lewis, Jermaine, Andre, and Brent. Absolutely. Every month, um, I will, I'm sure I'll remember, but if it's like, by the second stream of the month, if I haven't gifted subs, somebody poke me. Like, because <laughs> it's a new thing, and we know how I am. It'll take me a little while to get in the groove of it. Okay, so this last belt just needs to 
a little convincing, I think, to go down here. I'm sad about the K1C zombie because I was hoping, based off of the feedback from the, <clears throat> based off the feedback from the X, no, the K1 and K1 Max, that they were going to sort of kill it, <laughs> like have a really solid contender, and to hear that it's couldn't be further from the case is is disappointing to say the least. Okay, belts look like they're aligned okay. So all I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> I'm gonna keep my eyes on, can you guys see these belts dangling? Yeah, I'm gonna keep my eyes on these to try to make sure that they're the same length because they should, oops, they should be the same length. And I'm just going to tighten. Where is, there we are. They look pretty spot on to me when I'm holding them like this. <laughs> Definitely gonna need to do some tensioning. They're, they're, Certainly not what I would say tensioned enough, but let's just take a look and see, see if we see any scripts on my end. So right now we've got, let's see. I'm gonna loosen, I think what I'll do is I'll end up loosening the set screws on these guys and sort of move the gantry around and then let it find center or close to center and then we'll retighten those. But for now, that's right. This looks like we've got <clears throat> belt is centered on the on the idler, belt is also centered on the idler there. We go up to the top and we can see the same thing. So everything looks good on this side. Let's turn it around really quickly. Well, it looks like a lot of people like the original K1 printers. The K1 Max, I mean, all of these parts on here um, were printed on the K1 Max. So the K1 Max aside, well, yeah, aside from the the bed, I don't think is an awful printer. I think the bed is very poor quality. I'm hoping that someone comes up with a third party mix six style upgrade for it. Um, the the stock hot ends okay now that they fixed it, but I'm very happy with the micro Swiss one. It's worked great. And then the only complaint I have about their extruder is that they sort of copied the LGX design with it, but it only has uh, tensioned and not tensioned. There's not different levels of tension. And although that's that's how the Roto is, and I think that that's probably okay for most, most main materials, uh, if you're gonna be wanting to print with super soft TPUs, I don't think the K1 or K1 Max default, default extruder um, is going to be very, very good at it. I'm sure it's fine for like 95A, 97A, maybe even a 90A, but if you're wanting to print with really soft stuff, I, I just don't think that the extruder gear having no uh, tension adjustment is gonna be a really good idea. So this looks good. <clears throat> hey, Christos. Hey, Daniel. I'll be interested to see others get their pre-order units. Yeah, Crowley though, they're aimed at lowest cost for pretty much everything. I, I agree. I pulled this four layer thin 300 millimeter round ABS print off the bed before it was cool. Oh no. I've had that a few, I'm not patient. And, and there's been a few times where with small prints, I've pulled them and they just insta warp. And I'm like, ah, oh, why? May have to adjust motor spindle gear in or out. Yes. Yep. Um, hey, Ballistic, how's it going? Happy Wednesday. Happy Valentine's Day. I almost pre-ordered a K1C instead of my V0.2. Ooh, you dodged a bullet, I think. Gulf Coast has replacement. Yeah, I know Gulf Coast has uh, thicker beds for the K1, and when they released them, they had mentioned that they were going to that they were going to see how see how feedback goes or like demand goes, and based off that, potentially create one for the K1 Max. I would love to get one in for the K1 Max. Um, it's printed all the parts for this, so I, I feel like I've got it fairly dialed in at this point. Would I say it's perfect at this point? No, it still has definite room for improvement, but. It's a heck of a lot better. And really the bed would be the final thing that I'd like to replace on it, I, I think. So, okay, so I'm loosening the set screw. Let's see, is there two set screws on this guy? There is. Oops. 
Okay. Okay, so now this can move, it can move front and back uh, like so. So all I'm gonna do is sort of move around. Okay, so it looks like right about there. So if I pull the belt. Hmm. I'm gonna try to go even a hair, hair further, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to like let the camera see what I'm seeing, but I can't actually see. <laughs> I can't actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna say still a hair further towards the back. Oops, that was that was way more than a hair. I actually don't think that's that's too far back. <clears throat> uh, let's do, I just ordered the Micro Swiss hot end for my Sierra 10 SE. Nice. Yeah, I saw they just released the, they just released a new version of their um, hot ends, right? Okay, let's put on, I'm going to rewatch the series before my underwear build. How close is this to the current release from, how close is this to the current release from Bo Bone? I can't read that word. <laughs> Um, I don't know what that is. Is that is that a is that a recently released Enderwire build? I probably won't be able to provide much as far as as far as feedback on how similar or different they are because I don't I'm not too familiar with what that version or that build entails. Okay, so I don't want my set screw off. So let's see, I'm just gonna try to center the belt on this guy like that. That looks about right. Let's just see what happens if we tighten this down. Okay, let's see. So you almost, it looks like I almost want this as far back as I can get it. I, I think if I left it here, we would be okay. Like I can see it's definitely favoring, oh, let me show this again. So it's clearly not centered. Um, it's favoring this direction, but I can still see the teeth ever so slightly. So it's not rubbing against the edge, which is kind of the key thing you want to avoid. It'll, it'll, well, it says it'll cause artifacts. The main thing I've seen more than artifacts is that it just deteriorates your belt quickly. It'll start to shred the edge of your belt. <clears throat> hey, Ben. Looks like that part came out of the frame. Wait, what? What part came out of the frame? Oh, also, now that I, yeah, now that I think about it, the one thing, if this if this is shifting, so this is currently how I have it is loose. But once this is tightened, I have to remember that this whole entire piece is going to shift this way, and so once it shifts that way, I should probably be doing this like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it like that. It looks like that sort of straightens it out a bit. It will change, yeah, okay, so I think that's what you're saying is that, yeah, when you tighten the Z, this whole block is gonna slightly shift, so I should have been holding it up against her the whole time to get as accurate of a idea of how it's gonna be, but I think this is fine. Throughout the entire motion, it's staying, it's still, again, favoring the inside, but that's not really my concern. My concern is that it's not gonna be rubbing on the edge of the belt, so I'm happy with this one. Let's just tighten this back up. And if I need to, I can keep an eye on it. And if I start to see any edge wear on the belt, I can make more adjustments. But for now, I think we're fine. 
Uh, is that what you were saying, Jeff? Was that this part was away from the frame? I think I'm, I think I just didn't understand what you were saying. Belt tracking will be changed with tension, yeah. I think that's at least a good enough starting point. Okay, let's go to the other side. And we can lock these in and hopefully start working on the stealth burner. Well, actually, before I even loosen this one, let's just see if it even needs an adjustment. So, holding this up against here. That looks, okay. <laughs> I do that again, right? I, I favor showing you guys what I'm trying to do versus me actually being able to see what the heck I'm doing. I thought the nut came out. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see the nut come out. Hopefully it didn't. All right, so this is up against the frame. Let's move you up. Yeah, I think this does. I think it needs to slightly shift to the right. So we'll do a quick little, quick little adjustment here as well. Just any turn. Any turn. Motors upside down. Your determination to make everything work and succeed. Are you measuring the belts against each other to make sure the exact same length, same number of teeth? It can make a difference in the input shape results. Yes, I did that earlier. Also, what, I just missed, um, yeah, I did that earlier though. I, I measured out one, I cut it, and then I made sure the teeth are identical. And so they should be the exact same. <clears throat> um, it says anonymous tip. Thank you, anonymous, uh, for 1337. But let me see, I know there was a, there was a comment with that. So let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I, I try my best. I, I can't say I've always done that, but I definitely try my best to keep the belts the same uh, teeth count, if at all possible. <coughs> For your determination to make everything work and succeed. <laughs> thank you, thank you Anonymous for the, the message and the tip, I appreciate it. All right, so this should be, yeah, now this is loose. <clears throat> Not going for perfect, because again, I know things will shift a bit, but I at least would like a good baseline. That looks pretty damn good to me. Okay, let's tighten this up. Nothing wrong having to, uh, nothing worse than having to reroute them twice. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> trust me, I, I thought that I would, at with time, like in doing more and more builds, I would not mind belts so much, but belts are sort of my my kryptonite. I, I don't enjoy routing belts. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like it's found its place. It also looks, it almost looks to me like there's, um, I don't know if, if the, watch, let me see if you guys can see this on camera. It looks like the holy maybe isn't machined very well, but if you look at, let me see if I focus this in. Okay, so look at the, look at the right, very far right there. As I move this, it looks like it, it wobbles. Watch, let's see if you guys can see it. Okay, yeah, you can see that, right? It looks like it's wobbling. So that's gonna be interesting. I don't think that's the, I don't think it's the motor shaft that's got an issue. I think it's just the, the pulley. But that's weird to me. I, I didn't, this, I'm seeing a cheap pulley, yeah. I don't know where I've got, just yeah, it might just be the end cap. I'm hoping it's not the actual, like hopefully it's not gonna have an effect on it. I think it's just the top of the pulley. Yeah, if for some reason I start seeing some really weird artifacts, then that's gonna be one of the things I'll first swap out, but we'll use it for now. I'm also hoping it's just the end cap that might've been machined a little poorly. 
<laughs> but I, I definitely didn't notice it before right now. Yeah, it'll be interesting. <laughs> the things, the things, <laughs> the things you notice when you're staring, you know, staring at a tiny, tiny part. Looks like the end cap isn't all the way on the caption, ca uh, caption idler. Yeah, hopefully it won't be problematic. I mean, as long as the belt isn't rubbing on that part, I would think it would be okay, but we'll, we'll see. Hey, Llama. Uh, it's, it's the pulley. It's just the cap. They're actually made so you can break it off. Oh, really? Joining a bit late. I missed the draw. No, nope. Uh, the giveaway for the spool of polymaker filament will open in 25 minutes. So you are nice and early. What are we at? How many likes are we at? 75. Let's hit 100. We can do it. There's 134 people here, I believe. I believe we can do it. All right, so we know things are routed correctly, at least for the time being. Let's see what it says. Oh, that's all it shows. I don't think it really goes into tensioning very much, does it? Hmm. <clears throat> It's how we make the Z end stop before. Wait, it's how we make the Z end stop. You can take the pulley off and tap, uh, tap the cap back in a square. Interesting. How do I make this? You can fix it and you flip the motors to the wires on the bottom. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so I wish I remembered how the heck I would tension these on the switch wire when I built the other switch wire. Um, I am thinking, uh, sit here for a second. So I believe the whole process just revolves around this screw. So I think all I'm gonna do is basically turn this clockwise like, do one rotation and go back and forth between the screws on each side. Hey, Nadir! I'm just gonna rough tension them right now based off what feels right to me. But I believe that's how, I believe that, if I remember correctly, that's it. And then once that's tensioned, then you put these bolts back in place, so. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do, oops. One turn. I'm just gonna go back and forth between the two belts. So one turn, two turns, two turns, one, two. One, two. One, two. Yep, that's definitely doing it. One, two. Would would I say that they're tensioned evenly? That I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. Two. One. I think this is about how I'm gonna leave it. One more turn on this guy. Yeah, this is how I'm gonna leave it for now. Why are the motor leads pointing up? Uh, I wanna say I saw it in the guide, but I don't remember. I don't remember. Did it show to have them pointing up in the guide? Is that why I did it? Or was it just a, was it just a me thing? Um, Yeah, the guide shows them pointing up. That's why I did it. The motor leads are pointing up here. So I just did what I was told. I use a guitar tuner app on my phone. Is, but isn't it different? To, like different. You're not. Are you going for the exact same tension on each printer? I thought it depended on the machine. Like and the length. Is x-axis level? Yes, we trammed it. 
yeah, x-axis is indeed level. I think this is a this is a wide angle lens, so you have to, <laughs> yeah, some stuff is gonna look a little bit funky, but I promise, <laughs> like someone asked one time, is your frame, is your frame crooked? I'm like, no, 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 no. It's just, it's just the, um, it's just the camera lens. Yeah, belts can change it. You leveled your bed. <laughs> Damn it, mommy. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten now this bolt on each side. Which if you don't have, if you don't have modded belt mounts, you won't have this bolt. Okay. Mm, no, this needs, this needs more. This needs another turn. One hundred and fifty millimeters between pulleys, one hundred ten hertz. Yeah, that feels close to right. We're calling it there. Again, it's something that you can easily adjust later. We undo the three bolts, and then, um, why is it when I'm tightening it though? It feels like it's. No, it feels that feels pretty feels pretty darn close. And I run Gates. Gates has their own app for the belts. I didn't know that. I've used I think Guitar Tuner is what I've used. It was what was recommended when I built the Mercury 1.1. All right, that's done. <clears throat> Less chance of bed snagging motor wires if you turn them over. I don't think they'll snag. I mean, I'll, I'll make sure, I, I get it. If you have the motor wires facing, how would you have them facing? I wouldn't probably want them downward. Do you think just inward then? But there's a pretty big gap. Like if you look at this distance, there's a pretty big gap between here. So as long as the motor wires are tucked correctly, you shouldn't really run into issues with them hitting that. I think they're, I think they're also, I'm almost positive that I have them facing up on my switch wire as well. And it's, it hasn't been a problem. Uh, carbon drive by Gates, but you select motorcycle when using it. It works great. It's crazy. I, I didn't know that was a thing. Made it, took an act of God, oh no. Hey James, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully your Wednesday is only up from here then. Sounds like you've had quite the day. Okay, so I think we're good. Next big thing is, is gonna be the tool head, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've been running, let me, let's just for fun, see here, if I go YouTube, I'm gonna go to ModBot, Switch, Wire, I'm almost positive. Um, yeah, you can see it in the thumbnail. I've been running, even on my switch wire, I, I think that this is, this is the, the orientation the motors show in the docks, which is why I just stuck with it. But so you certainly can do any, yeah, there you go. You can see them. I've never nicked them and I've got a lot of hours on it. <clears throat> but yeah, you could certainly do them inward or downward. I wouldn't do inward. I think inward's probably worse than up because then you have this plug that's sticking out even more. 
So I think up or down would really be the only ways that would work. And if I, the downside of having them down, so it doesn't matter for these motors because these motors don't have removable plugs, but if you ever needed to unplug it or wanted to unplug it, you wouldn't be able to do that with them facing downwards. Just check Google for Prusa belt tuner works fine for me. Yeah, I know. I think, I think honestly, the reason why I would like down over up, if there was a reason, would be more for the aesthetic of it to hide the wires. It's prettier. It's, it's a prettier, <laughs> prettier orientation. <laughs> Scheduled food talk is about 15 minutes now. It feels weird because you started late. Yeah, we're gonna have to push food talk back. <laughs> we're gonna have to push the food talk back. Okay, so we did this, did this, belts are routed. So now we are going to jump over to Stealth Burner. So Stealth Burner, we have done this many a time. I almost wonder, I almost wonder if we don't find, I would love to get through the whole Stealth Burner today, but if we don't get through it, if I should just do Stealth Burner off stream because we've done Stealth Burner, we've done it quite a few times before. So, and it's the same, you know, it's essentially the same process. Although I guess there could be a few bits and bobs here that are slightly different because because of the hot end, uh, but it should be relatively similar. I also don't know, I think I did the heat inserts. I did. Do it live. Self burner, canvas. So the kit doesn't, downward facing plug, new yoga. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, we are getting takeout, no cooking on Valentine's Day. What are, you, what are you guys doing cookout wise? Erin closes tonight, so I won't even see her. She'll leave while I'm streaming and then she'll get home at like 9.30. My parents are making uh, an orange chicken tonight. Then tomorrow I'm making a clam pasta. Damn it, food talk. You you, <laughs> you conned me, zombie. Um, tomorrow I'm making a clam pasta dish and then Friday we're gonna go out for a belated Valentine's before my parents fly home. All right, let's start by getting out all of the pieces we're gonna need. So we've got that main body. We've got this piece right here. Heat inserts are already done though, which is at least a plus. I think I did all of them. So that should speed things up a little bit. We've got our cable chains, which I can't remember. <clears throat> Does this use two hole or three hole for the cables? It uses two hole. So those are the cable chains we're gonna need. Yep, these ones right here. Uh, I did LGX and a copperhead. Nice. Have you tried the G2 extruder for Voron? I have not, but I have it. Um, I have the Galileo 2 sitting in the closet right in front of me. So I, I plan on doing some upgrades probably to the Voron 2.4. And one of those will be the Galileo. I'm a huge sucker for planetary gears. Um, one, the Orbiter has been such a great extruder for me that any planetary gear system extruder, I'm kind of just a sucker for. Um, so we're definitely gonna be doing it, but no, I haven't I haven't done it yet. <laughs> clams in Idaho. These are just canned clams. It's not, it's not, we ain't doing fancy. It's pretty quick. It's basically, I'm just gonna, we're in food talk for six minutes, three minutes here. It's spaghetti, so right, just spaghetti pasta. It's olive oil, it's crushed red peppers, it's fresh parsley, it's garlic, it's lemon zest. Did I say olive oil? Parmesan cheese, and then it's canned clams. You basically, and I think that's it. Is there, I might be missing one part of the recipe. Well, you basically just take the clam juice from the cans and you mix it with the lemon zest and the parsley and you sort of let that, you no, know, parsley's last. So everything but that, and you let it just kind of thicken and evaporate a little bit, um, sort, of, it sort of thickens up. And then you heat up the clams and you throw it over the cooked spaghetti and you serve it with some Parmesan cheese and it is delicious. It is really good. And it's fairly simple, uh, fairly simple recipe. Just went through Nampa this morning. That's where I live. That's crazy. Are you, you're not in Idaho, Jack. Were you working or vacationing? I bought a GT for my Ender 3 Dent. Building it was really nice, but I've yet to power it on. <laughs> uh, RJ, join the Voron Discord linked in the GitHub. Uh, I love my G2. G2 is an orbiter, but done right. 
I've got the I got the new Orbiter Smart V3 and 2. I need to figure out what that's going on. I, I love the Orbiter. It's a really... I, I It's been great. I mean, I've been running it on the Mercury 1.1 for quite a while now, and it's I don't really have complaints. It's been very solid. Okay, we need this piece. We need, cool. So we're gonna start assembling this. So let me open this up. Hopefully we have all of the needed hardware because the mods did mean that I shorted us a little bit. We need the recipe. I can get the, I'll get you the recipe. It's not a homemade, um, it's not my thing. I found it a while ago online. <clears throat> I'm in Middleton. Oh, no kidding. You're close by. Oh, Jackson driver. Okay. Uh, I just had a great sushi dinner. We're, we're deciding for Friday for a Valentine's Day dinner. We're either doing sushi or there's this, I would call it like Mexican fusion. It's very like bougie Mexican um, twist on things like pineapple, like a pineapple habanero fish taco thing. Like it's it's really good. Um, but I'm really kind of craving sushi. Yeah, we were actually looking to, to uh, purchase in Middleton. We, we were, that was one of the places that we were looking at. Um, it didn't end up happening. We ended up going with Nampa, but I, I really like Middleton. All right, so let's align this like... Nope, that doesn't feel right. This will show me if my K1 Max's tolerances were... That is a tight, that is a tight, tight fit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very tight fit. I need to get my Chiron back up and running. Ted, uh, Ted's working on a Chiron. Um, how's that going, Ted? You were doing like sort of a stealth burner, a few different mods to it, but kind of like a Chiron to switch wire conversion. M316 socket heads. Do I have, yes. Yeah, the measurement device made it over. I use this thing so much. Okay, so I don't have M316s where they're supposed to be. I think these are probably the M316s. Let's just check that really quickly. Negative, that is our M312s, which belong here. Maybe these are M316s. As part of the move, I did not put all this hardware back the way it was supposed to be. Okay, so this is a 20. Where the heck are the 16s? Well, those are there, we just said. Okay, these are, these are, gotta be six, no, those are M4s. Okay, these look like them. Uh, today we had, today we had Picana? What is that? I need to get a Delta printer to watch at work. Do you work, you work in an office, zombie? I, I figured you definitely worked at home. Uh, M316. Need to zoom in a little bit. It'll probably be a little bit too before we have the overhead camera set back up, but I don't feel like I really use the overhead cam all that much, so hopefully it's not a huge deal. Uh, I work up so <laughs> Okay, I figured. I was, like, I was like, with how much stuff you're doing with 3D printing, like, I don't see how you're competing. Uh, that's tasty pecana. I've never heard of pecana. I have meatballs with mushrooms, gravy, and oh, that sounds delicious. This may seem like a silly question, but is ABS really a... S Wait, is ABS really a... S is that sturdy material for years down the road? I'm assuming commercial printers use injection mold or aluminum bodies. I think that's supposed to be, say sturdy, but ABS is a plastic that's used all over the place. I mean, a lot of consumer electronics, a lot of car parts. I would... I... I Imagine there's going to be some level of, there's got to be a difference in mechanical properties and even potentially thermal, but certainly mechanical from an injection molded versus a 3D printed part. But I would definitely say ABS is such a tried and true material that I, I would think it would be a sturdy material that would last a long time. I mean, depending on its application, but if you're using it in a appropriate application where it's not being blasted by UV or in some kind of really hot environment, I would think so. Yeah, a lot of ABS is, is such a, kind of is original from Brazil, specific part. Oh, interesting, I didn't know this. 
Cool, that's done. So now we need extruder parts, which are... So this is a little baggie of, of extruder parts it comes with. If I remember correctly, we're supposed to lube up the little post that these bearings go onto. And I think I know, I think I know where the grease is and I think I know where gloves are. Let's see. I tried to keep a mental note of where I was shoving things in this closet. Gloves check. Where is the, oh shoot. Wow, these are really long gloves. I don't, these are definitely not the normal gloves I get. Uh, lube, yay! These are like, these just feel like longer gloves. <laughs> I wish, I kind of wish that they were like to elbow. <laughs> these are, these are definitely not the normal gloves I get. They feel a lot more heavy duty. Jeez Louise. Different color too. Uh, hey, aliens here. Alien <laughs> always comes when I, when the gloves come out. <laughs> Uh, right now, I'm just doing a stealth burner with Clicky PCB. Okay, and a clack ender type donk. I'm on the fence of going full tyrant wire, but I'll probably do it. I have that ender free Mac. Okay, gotcha. So right now, you're mostly focused on tool head. Yeah, these gloves are obnoxious. Hey, BBs! Y'all with your gloves. You gotta have gloves. Um, I know it's late. I know it's late. You want me to drop a ping on the live stream? Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. We're still gonna be streaming for at least another hour and a half or so, so definitely. Thank you, I completely forgot. There's been so much going on. All right, so we're just gonna put a little bit of, <laughs> I feel like the gloves are probably overkill for this, but a little bit on here. That's plenty. And then I am just going to basically mix this around and around like that. And I will take my glove off. Uh, yes, it is just about giveaway link time. I will get that posted as soon as I've got these guys installed. So put one bearing on, like so. Second one on, like that. Then we need our... Let's see, this one has a set screw. This one does not have a set screw. So this one goes right there. And then... I think gloves can probably come off. I almost feel like I should reuse these gloves. It's kind of wasteful. Okay, and then this is gonna snap into here and hopefully with my super tight tolerances of the K1 Max, this won't break it. Please go in, that one in and that one in. And we are spinning beautifully. Let me try to center this out a little bit. The post feels a little bit long. Hmm, I don't recall, the post is sticking out a hair. I don't think it'll pick up on camera, but I can feel it. So I'm gonna try to at least just center it. So that way it's not favoring any side, but there we go. Bearing teeth are in. Okay, let me get the giveaway link posted. Give me one second. Ooh, we got hundred likes. Thank you. Let's see what we got, 137 people. Let's see if we can get to 125. That'll be our new target. Let's go, oops, I'm sharing, I'm sharing the stream link, not the giveaway link. Send, copy, shorten URL, copy, and paste in chat. Okay, so giveaway form is pasted in chat. I will pin it in one second. Uh, but if you have not, I feel like most everyone knows, but the drill, uh, if you have not filled it up before, it's for a spool of Polymaker filament ship anywhere in the world. If you don't have a Discord, just put don't have or NA or something like that. It needs something to be there, but I almost always reach out via email. And we will be doing the drawing live in 30 minutes. Last week I shared the recipe uh, for the Mexican marshmallow hot chocolate ice cream Discord. It came out amazing. Okay, I did. I saw it mentioned and then I, I got completely side railed with the move. I will, I need to pin that or save it somewhere. I'm gonna try to make it for Aaron and me, um, I love ice cream. I am 
am such a fan of ice cream <laughs> and I think it'll be a fun, uh, fun thing to try to make. Thank you for sharing it. I know there was a few others that were interested too. Hey, hey Luke, uh, how was your birthday? How was the birthday stream? How, uh, how are we doing with the build today? Has my, I've not been squirreling. I've been very good. Should probably like the video. <laughs> Thanks, zombie. Uh, damn, I wish sure it was you. Lurking for food. Happy Valentine's Day, folks. It was great. Awesome. Yeah, I, I wish... It was my mom's birthday as well, and we were mid-move, so I wasn't able to drop by, but I really wanted to, but I was hoping it went well. It seemed like it did. I saw some posts over on Twitter X. Um, is that my... I think the dog wants to come in. Let's see. Nope. Delilah is the, uh, my parents just brought groceries back, so Delilah is occupied. Okay, we've got that in place. Next thing is we're getting our this little tension arm, putting a spring on it. And it shows, it shows that there's a washer for it, but there's no washer in here, so I think... I think we can use one of these guys. Silicone gasket. This is not a silicone gasket. I'm not exactly sure what these are for. These are little plastic spaces or shims. And there's also a metal, there's also a metal one. And I think they're typically plastic. I'm almost positive they are. So I'm gonna take one of these and hope that's what it was intended for in this kit. So that way we've got that right here. <clears throat> they don't include a washer. Is it, hopefully, I don't know what this washer is intended for then, but this is what I'm using it for. Plastic washer or retainer, yeah. Hey, LSE's in the house, how's it going? I don't use Orca. Uh, don't see him in here today. Yeah, I think that I don't know what else this would be used for, so I'm just going to use it and hope that's what it's for. Okay, so we are putting this through here, and then it's going to go on to this piece, like so. Okay, that's not very tight, but that's at least it's holding it in place, so we'll leave it. Leave that for now. I do have, I do have like official, I bought a bunch of the official like Bontech ones from KB3D a while back. So if this one ends up being an issue, I'll just yank it and use one of those. But for now, we'll, we'll stick with what they've got. Oh God, the bearing check. Okay, hopefully. Well, this bearing's already like preloaded. So I'm scared to even attempt to take it off. This is, this is too tight. Why? So these bearings should be able to slide on and off pretty easily. Um, and it doesn't, which sucks. So I don't, this one that's pre-installed, I don't think I'm even going to attempt to take it off. They have it on here. I'm going to hope for the best, but for this one, that's going to go on this side. We need to sand the shaft on this ever so slightly. It's easiest to like throw this in the drill, but I'm just gonna probably, I'm probably just going to sand it. Sand, yeah. Uh, draw time? It's not draw time. Just 30 minutes left. That's all printed in ABS. Uh, what is this? Isn't this isn't printed? This is probably palm. I, I don't. I've never actually seen this exact style of gear. I also I have other versions of this gear that we could use as well, like <laughs> from Bontech. But we'll use what this kit has and see how it all works out. But yeah, all the other teal and purple parts are ABS. It's usually just the very end of the shaft. Yeah. Yeah, because it only, that, that, that's correct. You don't have to sand the entire thing. I mean, usually when you're holding it, you're going to be sanding more than just the end. But you really only need enough for it to be able to pop on and off for the width of this bearing itself. So let me run out to the garage. I know, I think I know where sandpaper is at on a cart. And if that's the case, then we will... Sand this really quickly. Hopefully that'll be all we need and I will be right back. So give me one second. Oh, the giveaway link's not pinned. <laughs> Sorry.
Um, ice cream. Here we go. <laughs> that was the first. Okay, let me know if it's pinned. It should be pinned. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Thank you. Be right back. Let me go grab some thin paper. Okay, I found some tin paper. I just tore off, look, it's 400 grit. How long do you cool down your ABS parts after printing? Man, not very often. And it depends too, like if, if, it's a, if it's a really thin part, you typically want them to cool down because if you have to pry them off at all, they just, they warp so easily. But on a typical tray of parts, as soon as the bed isn't hot to the touch, like, I mean, I'm sorry. So the bed can still be warm, but as soon as I'm not burning myself touching it, I'll take the flex plate and usually flex it off. So I don't wait very long, generally speaking. <clears throat> don't you usually pin the draw link? Yeah, it's pinned now, right? That was my bad. I Luke came in and asked if I'd been squirreling around and <laughs> Just have a second build plate. That's a that's a really good idea, actually. That's a really good idea. If you have a second plate that you can cycle, that's not bad at all. Then you can just let it cool down even more. Because the one issue I've seen with ABS parts, uh, when on certain build plates and certain temperatures, when you remove them, because they're sticking so hard, you'll get sort of like stress marks. Uh, you'll get stress marks on the bottom of the ABS, which doesn't look real nice. Okay, that was plenty. Um, that was that was plenty. So just a little bit. That was a lot easier than I thought. So you can see where I sanded. I mean, I, that took what a minute or two, if that. And so it's at least enough where the bearing now could just sort of pop on fairly easily. I still feel a little bit of resistance, but it's it's plenty good. You basically just want to be able to get onto the shaft without it damaging the inner of the bearing. Yeah, that'll be fine. I just I just cleaned my bed 105 times. God. Stress marks can be removed with the heat gun. Yes, I, I use it all the time. I'm <laughs> I use it all the time. So I, I don't usually mind the stress marks because if they're bugging me, then I'll just hit it with a heat gun really quick. So, yep, I agree. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so it says fit the bearing, which I'm not going to do in this case. So we will drop the other bearing inside of here. And usually with this, I just take a um, the biggest Allen key that'll fit, which I think is usually the red. Huh, that went in beautifully. So I just use an Allen key to help press fit in place. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to apply a ton of force. If you have to apply a ton of force, then it probably means you're you're. Um, Printer is not very dialed into your profile for the material, which has totally happened to me before. There's a few installs where it's been a nightmare, and I'm like, ah, I think I need to, I think I need to adjust this a bit. Okay, this is saying so. Did I goof? It looks like there's supposed to be a heat insert right there, maybe for the. Let's see. Yeah, uh, yes, is that it right there? Yeah, so I did I did miss one of the heat inserts. Okay. Uh, heat inserts are right here. 
Print failed to launch. Hey, Mr. Ruffley, got the chance to pick up a castle. Wow, that's awesome. From your welding teacher. That's cool. There's been some really good deals. Dom said he got a MK3S Plus with a MMU2 or 2S for, I think, 300, 300 euros. Looks pretty good to me. Used winter gloves the other day to grab 105C plate. Let the gloves burn. Not my fingers. I've had a monoprice delta. I've hated that thing. <laughs> oh no. Oh, pounds. It was pounds, not euros. My bad. <laughs> I always, I always screw those things up for some reason. Okay, so that's good. Now we need M36 flathead M36. And I think we're supposed to start with this all the way in. It says to add a small amount of medium strength thread locker. Um, I don't know if I normally do that. I also don't know if I, if I have any idea where the heck the thread locker is from the move. So if we can find it, I'll use it. If not, I'll just hope for the best in this case. Let's <clears throat> no thread locker there. No thread locker there. Good locker. All right. So this is, I believe this is the screw that sort of sets the meshing for the gears on the extruder. And so you'll need to adjust it depending on material you're printing. <clears throat> so I'm just going to other thing to note, I mentioned this before, but Loctite and ABS or ASA parts do not mix. So be very careful. It will, it will cause your, oh, let me focus actually while I do this. There we go. It will, it will break your ABS parts. Like it'll make them, there's a chemical reaction that happens where it breaks down the section touching the Loctite. Um, so yeah, just be very careful. Okay, so that's all the way in. I just made sure I put a little bit of Loctite and then made sure I had it lined up so that it, the Loctite went from screw to brass and not screw to printed part. I hate that screw. <laughs> I'm a Chiron in the 3 Max. Uh, we're free, but needing repairs. That's right, you did say you got them for free. No, it's to make the least amount of squeeze the mesh can be so you don't get greedy gears. Wait. It's to make the least amount of squeeze the mesh can be. So you don't get grinding gears when too soft filament is in the extruder. Gotcha. But you want to adjust it based off of material, right? You know, know why I use my orange Permatex. Yeah, I think you've mentioned Permatex a few times. I, I can't say, I've never used it, but I'm if, if there's no risk of it damaging ABS or ASA, it's, probably a safer option. Okay, this says a note on gears, poorly made gears often cause print quality issues. For best performance, consider sourcing, initial position. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna set this position. We'll align this with a piece of filament. Um, so all we're gonna do is take a, take the set screw out and put a little bit of Loctite on it <clears throat> and get this lined up. So let's go like this. Hey Chaos, uh, what have you missed? We routed belts, uh, which went pretty smooth, I think. And what else have we done? We routed belts and we are starting on the flood. So not a ton. We talked about a clip. We, I talked about a clam recipe that I make. Okay, so set screws going in some Loctite. This one I do recommend having Loctite on. I need to take apart my my switch wire because the set screw backed out and it's now rotating, rotating on the motor shaft. 
So we want teeth, teeth facing inwards. And we are just going to <clears throat> tighten it, but not so much that it can't go up and down, but just enough that it's not able to spin off of the flat part of the shaft. So let's see. So that was, there we go. So now it's still able to go up and down, but it's tightened enough where if I try to twist it, it's stuck on the flat part of the, the shaft. <sighs> Hello from Portugal. Hey, hey Express. Is the, in, is the injection for the rails in this kit or do you buy them extra? Wait, is the ink injection for the rail? I don't know what that is. Steve doesn't even put that screw in if you're talking about the anti -screw. He doesn't? How funny. Yeah, I'm talking about the anti-squish uh, screw. No, we want gear pointing inwards. What? I did it right, you silly. <clears throat> For the grease, oh. Uh, no, I bought it separately. I bought it separately. I just use, this is primarily what I use. It's worked great, multi-purpose synthetic grease. Um, I've used it for a lot of builds. My biggest complaint is that it's kind of thick. Oh man, and it's messy. It's kind of thick, um, and so it's not super fun to apply. I'm probably gonna spend a little bit more money and just get like a pre-loaded syringe of the Mobile 2 that is sold by a couple different vendors. Uh, Mr. Melted, thank you for becoming a member. Again, I, you were a member before. You've been a member. Thank you. Yes, but you put the gear in and teeth out, but you said teeth in. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. Okay. So next we are going to place this on here. Hopefully it'll pop right in. There we go. This is going to be interesting. It spins okay, but I feel like... I got grease on my hands now. I feel like the, the bearing that was pre-installed on here isn't going to be doing us much favor. It might be okay. We'll, we'll leave it like that for now. We'll see how it goes. Okay, and then this half is just going like this. Uh, oops, like that. Okay. I do think we're going to have to shift things around a bit, though. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Um, they sell a stick as well, and it's much less messy. A stick of grease or a stick of... How long for Dan to get that I've changed channel name? Oh, oh I, <laughs> I can tell, Sam, I can tell by the icon. If you had it, if you had changed your icon too, then I would have no idea. But no, I recognize the icon. <laughs> I'm just going with Mr. Melted since that's what you changed the name to. It will, it will self clear uh, with use. Don't worry. Got it. Okay, Loctite. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the Loctite. I've seen the stick of Loctite. Um, I think at the hardware store. All right, so let's attach some stuff here. M325, M325s. Uh, 10 ish more minutes on the giveaway. So if you haven't filled it out, there is a form pinned in, in chat and we're gonna give away a spool of polymaker filament here in just a little over 10 minutes. <clears throat> Ooh, we hit 129 likes. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Let's see if we can hit 150. There's not even 150 people here. That's our next target, though. <laughs> Let's see if we can do it. All right, so we need M325s. That's what we're doing here. And it's going in here. And it's going in the bottom. I pretty much only get the Loctite sticks. I need to get, I need to get a Loctite stick. But I think the Loctite sticks only come in the hardest color, right? Like in the strongest. That's my concern. If they have it in like medium, medium hold, 
then I would absolutely be about it and I would pick one up. Uh, sorry, I forgot to hit like. No worries. How have you been down in Florida? How, how, how are you doing, Ellis? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be be curious to see how well the extrusion goes with this. Uh... Hopefully it's fine. I know they come in red and blue. Okay, I think red's the hard sticking one. Um, blue might be medium. I have the medium stick. But you're in a different part of the world, Nappin. I don't know if we have it. Permatex is ABS friendly and smells like blueberries. That sounds lovely. Does per Permatex also has a stick? Check the filament path lines with the teeth. Okay, so we are going to now just grab a piece of filament. I've got some filament out here. We'll just cut off a little bit. Cut off a piece of filament. Like that. Okay. So we're gonna align that. Um, we're gonna align the extruder gear. There we go. Let's shove this in through here. It looks pretty pretty good to me. Basically just it's hard to show this on camera, but Oops, that's that's not what I wanted. Basically just trying to make sure that the filament is right in the center where the teeth are that are gonna be biting it when it feeds it when the motor turns. So it looks good. Now we'll just leave the filament in place and tighten up the set screw. It's probably plenty tight, especially, oh, I can't even, Give me it. There we go. I think there's only, am I wrong? Is there more than one or is there just one? I think there's only one. Yeah, it looks like just one. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. Hey, Steve. I forgot how easy it is to print ABS as compared, as compared to what? I have some blue Loctite in a glue stick. Okay, cool. So they do have it in blue then as well. Yeah, I might need to pick up some of that. I, I'm i gonna I'm gonna get rid of this little bit of Loctite because the amount of times I've had a little bit of Loctite on my desk and I tell everyone to be careful with ABS parts and then I forget it's there and set it down on top of it is, is more than one. I'm not really proud of that. Okay. We did this, alignment looks good. We tightened it down. Okay, so now we're gonna install the tension arm. I think we're gonna need that filament again here in a second. So we'll grab this and we'll have it facing with the Voron logo facing towards us. Grab the arm and shove this. Why don't I remember? feels tight. I wonder. Ooh, there we go. I think I tightened these screws a bit too much initially. These two screws that I did to tighten the two halves, I'd probably not have them quite as tight as I did. But now that we're in, this should be able to pivot, hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to loosen these. These are, I think, a little overkill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> PLA and PTG, I find ABS is much more forgiving with a generic profile. Gotcha. I had I had a funny run in um, just a few days ago where I was printing a super simple model and it just kept failing. Like, I think I tried it four or five times. I mean, I caught that it was failing within the first few layers, but it was driving me crazy because I couldn't figure out what the deal was. And it ended up just being that I, I had loaded PETG when I thought I had loaded PLA. So the bed being at 60 Celsius didn't help on, on powder coated PEI. So 
Adhesion was a bit of an issue. And then I think I was printing at 215 on the, um, on the hot end. And it was printing okay for the first layer when it was starting, when it was just doing a really slow first layer. But when it started to pick up some speed, like the retractions were just disgusting. I mean, it, it was like a rat's nest in here of, of um, that doesn't need to be that tight either, a filament. Okay, that's good. You get a nice little pivot. Is that the correct position? Is it not the correct position? Yeah, this is right. Yeah, this is, this is right. The teeth are meshing. So the teeth from the arm and the teeth from here are meshing with each other. If you get locked in your clothes, it will not go away after washing. Good to know. Yeah, this should be, this should be right. You know, <laughs> you got me, you got me questioning myself now, but it looks right. Okay, so next we need the arm, which is purple guy. <clears throat> this doesn't feel like it's snapping on very well. Uh, sorry, never mind. You haven't installed the latch. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and the latch is not on yet. For some reason, I feel like it's not snapping the way I'd expect it to. It's sort of. Let's see. Let me tighten this bolt in and see if it makes a difference. M325 again, which is right here. I wish I could build toolholds for a job. I love the assembly process, so relaxing. <laughs> this is probably the third or fourth, I think, stealth burner we've built. There we go, okay. So yeah, it was just a matter of this not being tightened. So now latch snaps on, latch comes off, and we should be able to pivot. Yep, looking fine. Yeah, so that mean, mean the main pivoting bolt, without it, it won't, it won't latch very well, so. Cool, that looks good. Uh, next up is the anti-squish thingamajig. So we will feed this filament through here again and close it down. And basically, I don't think I need to adjust it, let's see. Uh, softer and flexible materials will deform and the extruder poorly under too much tension. Clockwork 2 adds an adjustment feature to set the minimum distance between the drive gear and the idler, limiting the squish on the filament and to prevent the gears from meshing too tightly or binding. Yeah, I don't think I really need to adjust it for rigid materials. Um, I will, let me see. Can I actually see it? Uh, I think it's right here. Nope. Do where is the is this the right driver? Yeah, I'm gonna counter turn it just a hair. Yeah, it feels fine. I mean, I usually just want to make sure that I don't know how well I can show this. Uh, you can you see the teeth marks? I basically just want to make sure I'm getting like a light indentation on here. I adjusted it without filament until the gear went smoothly. Oh, interesting. That might be worth checking out because the gears aren't going super smoothly. This is definitely not... Considering that there's no motor attached here, I would think that these should be moving a bit smoother. So let's try that. Let's try your method. So let me go. So this is all the way in. So all the way in, not not doing too hot. One turn, worse. 
two turns. I would say we're getting worse. So I think all the way in. Yeah, that's not getting better. Let's just tighten this all the way back. I don't feel like it's making much of a difference, actually, now that I'm. <clears throat> I do what you did. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, Dutch. It's to save when printing soft filament for the gears. Are you adjusting the inner? Yeah, exactly. I'm adjusting the inner screw, but the meshing, I'm just feeling it feels like it doesn't feel smooth like it like it like so it's not this this is this the red gear is is free spinning it's once i am applying the tension arm and these are engaging with each other it feels not great hmm I'm just gonna keep adjusting this thingamajig really quick. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, I lied. I lied. It definitely got better. This feels this feels more in line with what I'm used to. So let me grab a new piece of filament that doesn't have any teeth marks on it. And let's see, because I, I, I do want, I do want there to be some teeth mark. So that way I know that it's at least biting down Let's see. Oh, that didn't. Uh, every time I. Crap. Every time I lose sight of the end of the filament, I get worried I'm going to tangle the spool. Okay, so let's, let's take this little piece of filament. Let's cut off. No, it's already at an angle, so we're fine. Open this up. Shove this in here. Tighten it down. Yeah, that's, I think this is actually that, not a bad idea, Nappin. So I still think that verifying that you're getting teeth marks is good, uh, especially on rigid material. <clears throat> Let me see if I can show you guys this again. Let's see. Can you see them? They're actually finer teeth marks, which is good. I mean, you your goal isn't to dig into the filament as tough as you can, but you do want it to at least grip, you know, grip strongly on the filament. So, <clears throat> The way I adjusted the little screw inside now, the gears are turning much smoother, which is not a bad thing, and we're still getting those teeth marks that I like to see, so. Thumb screw also plays a part. That's a good point. That 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 definitely is true. The thumb screw, <clears throat> gosh. The thumb screw is what basically applies force onto the latch, then shoves that gear into the other gear. So, and I don't have that overly tensioned. The good thing is this can all be adjusted later, but I, I think that we're at at least a really good starting point. So it's much better. It feels much better than it did initially. So I'm, I'm happy with that. <clears throat> okay, so now it's motor time. What time is it? It's 4.03. Okay, I'm giving everyone two minutes, two minutes, and then we are going to remove the, the giveaway form from chat that's pinned, and we will be drawing for the spool of filament. <clears throat> Where is motor? There it is. I'm staring me right in the face. Enter, Dutch! Enter now! <laughs> Do it! The one thing I can never remember is what orientation. So if this is top, I would think. <clears throat> Aaron's leaving for work. I'm trying to wave down to her. I don't think she can see me. No, she definitely can't see me. Hey, she can't see me. I think she can see me. Hold on. <laughs> maybe uh, I don't know 
I want to know if buy because it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think it's happening. Nope, I tried. Okay. <clears throat> I think if I remember correctly, I want the the wire facing upward. So I believe like this, basically coming out. And I think that when I plug it into the board over here, it usually routes like that. That looks correct to me. So let's get one screw in here, an M330, and then we'll do the we'll do the drawing. Those are not M330s. This is the last M330. Hopefully I've got more. Uh, where's our measurement tool? Have y'all moved yet? Yes, yes, we have. We have moved. This is the new place. You can't tell. <laughs> the background has nothing. I can put on some more 8-bit music for you, Nappin. I gotta adjust the playlist. There's been some weird stuff. I guess, I think, based off what Nero was saying, the reason why I was getting copyright strikes is somebody's been going around and, like, falsely flagging um, a bunch of the stream beat songs, and so that's what the issue was. So I deleted a ton of songs from the playlist, trying to narrow it down to what was causing it, so I just need to add the songs back. Okay, I'm officially, officially removing the form. So let's go to remove and unpin message. <clears throat> background music, it feels kind of depressed. <laughs> I, I changed it. Mod about background had nothing last stream either. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it was. <laughs> is that Teal ASA Polymaker? Yes, it is the Teal ASA Galaxy ABS. Okay, so how many entries? Let's see how many likes we got. <gasps> 137. We, we, we didn't hit 150. If you haven't hit the like button, smack it. Let's see if we can get to 150 while I'm doing this. But we, we did, all things considered, pretty good. 114 entries. We download these really quickly here. Download, change cam to me. But yeah, it was basically five, no, I think the first seven days, I took from Wednesday of the week before last week, Wednesdays are normally my day off, so I took off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I work Saturdays, and then I took off Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and throughout that entire time, it was all moving stuff. It took me and my dad, so we're between five to seven days to do the entire garage, which was masking, cutting in, and painting the whole thing with two coats, uh, grinding down the concrete, vacuuming the garage like twice, epoxying the garage with a base coat, a main coat, two clear coats, and then moving a bunch of stuff in. So that took like way more time than I had expected. So then the last five days has been actually like moving stuff finally. We rented a U-Haul last Thursday and Friday was all the big stuff, and then now it's just cleaning cleaning in some small things here and there. Okay, here's the form. I need to go to Google Drive. That's not how you spell drive. There we go. I think I said there was 114 entries, is that right? Yeah, 114. Oops, that's not right. Today is the 14th, not the 7th. Here we go. Awesome, awesome. I also need to get the Wheel of Names to have a background again. It, we lost the Steve Builds logo and then the original Modbot Army logo, so I need to you need to get there's a few things I need to do here. More Scatus pegboards. Yes, there are three. So I'm gonna be doing so there was two at the previous place, right? They were stacked on top of each other. There will be three here and they'll be vertical side by side by side. So I just need to wait a month. Um, they're supposed to be delivered March 15th. So in 30 days, the background will start start coming together. But until then, it's just <laughs> me in a very empty room. If you sent me a zero G logo, I'd find a place for it. I got five rolls for $80 when you drop. No, nah, that's awesome. You need to get a few spools. The Galaxy stuff is really pretty. It looks it looks good in, uh, in person as well. Just started building my V2.4 from Fisex. So excited. That's awesome. Congratulations, Cody. How do we enter? It's too late. It was up for like 40 minutes. Sorry. 
Okay, here we go. So first giveaway in the new place, super excited. Still doesn't feel real. I mean, the place is starting to feel more and more, you know, like it's ours, <laughs> but it's so weird. I don't know. It's just a weird concept. We've always, we've always rented and it's, it's weird, <laughs> but a good weird, not a bad weird. Um, so yeah, as always, thank you to Polymaker for letting us do these giveaways, supporting the channel and all sorts of awesome things I mentioned last week, but they came out with a ton of new filaments and products and colors and lines in 2023. So I am really excited to see, I'm sure they've got a, a pretty, uh, extensive list of things they're working on for the year. So it'll be cool to see what ends up coming out. Hopefully some of those will be ABSs and ASAs, although I, I, I think that they have the biggest probably lineup of ABS and ASAs now with all the different series of, that have come out, like the Galaxy and the Neons and such, or Pop, the Pop series. <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's see, let's, for shuffling, we're gonna do 14 shuffles. It's, it's the 14th of February, it's Valentine's Day, we will do 14 shuffles and 114 entries. It's perfect. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then I will contact the winner um, today after the stream. You'll get an email from me, which basically will have a form you'll need to fill out with Polymaker. So that way you can get your gift card and purchase your spool of filament with the gift card. Or you can use it towards one of the like carbon spools or something. If you need something super fancy, um, you can also do that as well. So here we go. Good luck, everybody, in three two, one, here we go. Still no galaxy in the EU? Zombie, do you have any information on, on the spreading of galaxy? Excuse me. James, James Jones, you are our winner. Congratulations. First, first winner in the new place. You get air horn, you get a cheer. Congratulations. I will send you an email later today and you'll be able to uh, get your gift card and pick out your spool of filament. So that's awesome. Congrats. Um, I'll be going through Portland Saturday. Guess I better hit Ikea. You gotta hit Ikea. I don't know if Zombie's still here. I need to ask. I feel like if anyone would know, a Zombie would know if Galaxy is spreading to the EU. But I feel like I've heard it was happening. I just, I don't, I don't have any under, it's been a long time. I don't have any additional info on it. All right, so we need an M38, which is probably these these little guys. M38, let's see. Ciao from Italy! Awesome. Thank you for stopping by. All right, so we've got an M3 washer and an M38 socket head. So this must be where that little metal washer goes that I found earlier. There we go. So little screw, little washer. And this is gonna be for our adjusting point. So I'm just going to try to drop it in here uh, like that. That was a fail. Let's see if I can do it with, there we go. Okay, so we wanna make sure we don't overly tighten this screw because this is our Basically, we're going to use this to mesh our gears. So oop, I tightened that too tight. It's not pivoting. Loosen. There we go. So now if you, oop, if you are looking, this has some wiggle room. So we'll tighten this in a second. But for right now, we want to make sure that these aren't super tight. So that way it can pivot back and forth like that. We got 151 likes. You guys are awesome. Thank you, everybody. Air horn. All right, zoom out a little bit. OK. So we've got this in place. We've got the access hole that you basically just stick your Allen key through here to be able to tighten this one. Okay, so now we're gear meshing. And I, it's very difficult to explain the gear meshing to someone that hasn't seen this. And there's a really good video that someone, a, cu a couple of people in chat had showed me when I first, uh, hey James, yeah, thank you, this is cool. Absolutely, I will send you an email again this evening and that way you can pick out, well, you won't, you won't pick out your spool, you'll get a gift card uh, and then you can pick out whatever you'd like. So the way that the way that the meshing basically works is your your let me see if I can you're taking the teeth on the stepper and you're 
essentially interlocking them with this red, big red gear right here, right? So when this turns, it turns and feeds your filament. So if you have it completely the other direction, as far away as possible, there's no, there's no connection, it's not engaging, oh, now it is, but it's not engaging with the stepper motor. And if you have it all this way, we are in engaging with the stepper motor. And so we are trying to get rid of backlash. We don't want, we don't want gaps between our teeth, so that way, um, like we want them to be interlocked, but we don't want them to be overly interlocked and we don't want them to be underly <laughs> interlocked. So what you're going for is you go based off the wiggle of this gear. Uh, and it's almost, it's almost feeling, you're going based off feel in a way. So it's tougher to show, I think, on the red gear. But if you look at this, you can see, look at that, it's wiggling back and forth. That's too much. So what we want is to have the motor We want just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of movement. It's almost like it's almost like the correct amount. You can't actually see it moving, but you can kind of feel it moving a hair. So that that's well, that's way too much. That's way too much. Way too much. Still too much. Ooh, that's close. That's close. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna call that good if I can figure out where the heck the port is I need to tighten, which is on this side. I have a feeling I'm gonna screw it up while I'm trying to tighten this, let's see. Now it feels about right still. Let's see if I can do this. Sorry, I know you guys can't really see what's happening because I'm holding this at a super awkward angle, but I will try to... Okay, let's see if that's still good. Okay, so I'm gonna call this good still. Um, I'm with Daniel, the tiniest bit of movement. Yeah, I like I like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of movement. So um, you probably will be able to see this. Let me see, can I freaking, there we go. Okay, so, I don't know, you can, you can see a hair, you can see a hair. It's compared to before, nothing in comparison, but there's a tiny, I mean, I could even probably go with a hair less than this, but this is pretty dang close. I, I'm, I'm gonna leave it like this, there we go. You can see it, like, look at that on the side. It's just a tiny, tiny bit of play right there. Hey, Aaron's here. Everyone say hi, Aaron. Have a wonderful day at work. Um, I don't know if you can hear me, hun, but I was I was waving out the window at you, hoping you'd look up when you left. <laughs> so yeah, a tiny, tiny bit of play on here. No, she her work is like five minutes away, so she's already there. It's it's so close. Yeah, I, I could even go for a little less wobble than this, to be perfectly honest with you, but I'm, I'm happy with it. We're gonna leave it for now. <clears throat> There's a, there's a good video that goes into a little bit more deeper explanation um, that I don't know the name of, but I'm sure if you just search stealth burner meshing, um, that will very likely, very likely pull it. I hear Jackson yelling. Yeah, that feels pretty good to me. I'm quite happy with that. You taking off nice? <clears throat> Thanks for hanging out. Next week will be, let's say, next week will be you probably finishing Stealth Burner and then we'll be mounting all the electronics. The electronics are gonna take some time because we're using a different board that's in intended, so that'll be fun. We'll, I imagine there'll be some laughs and some troubleshooting and more laughs, <laughs> followed by food talk. So pretty standard stuff. <laughs> Have a wonderful night, nice. Okay, Titan one done, gear meshing good. All right, last thing. Oh. I think we're nearly on to the cast. Okay, we're almost done with the clockwork. We're doing pretty good with timing, I, I think. Okay, so M320 is what we need next. M320 up here at the top. So we're gonna attach. We are going to attach. My grandma called me to say hello. Sorry, I looked up but didn't see. Oh, no worries. I, I couldn't tell what you were doing. I was like, she's rocking out or she's talking to someone. Have a great shift. I love you. See you tonight. Okay. This guy is going like this. This guy is going through the only hole on the back of this. Jackson's just yelling, oops. He's yelling a storm up down there. He's been having a really good time hanging out with my uh, mom and dad. Okay, so screw's going out there. It's just going into this little, um, little heat insert. So we will align 
Actually, it's probably easier if I get cut my cut my driver. Turn this to the side like that. Okay. I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna overly tighten it yet because we need to align the second screw that's going into it from this side. There's a little hole right here, which is I think a M3, just M38 probably, it's a little guy. Yeah, M38. So grab one of these. Get him in here. There we go. Cool, now that that's in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I screw up? Did I screw up? It's not tightening. Something tells me... No, there is a heat insert there. Maybe I just need to tighten it more. Let's try this again. Didn't feel like it was tightening, but I think I just had more threads. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now that this is tight, I will tighten the other side so that way our cable chain mount is nice and secure. Looking good. Awesome. Next is the cable. Oh, that's right, the bat, the bat latch. I, I think I need to reprint this actually. Yeah, that looks hideous. I'm gonna reprint this. I, I forgot until right now, but this is, I didn't notice it until later on. Um, it just didn't turn out good there. I need, I don't know what exactly it was, if it was cooling related or what, but I'm gonna reprint this part before I attach this. But the last step for the clockwork is just this bat, Batmobile Batwing. <clears throat> um, that's going to mount right here. Right here-ish. <laughs> So I'm gonna reprint this, I'm not gonna install it, but essentially clockwork's done other than just the cover, which we don't even really care to put on yet anyway. <clears throat> so that's that. Let's now let's take a look at the hot end assembly part of this. Home, Home Cheapo has a screw size chart for a couple bucks uh, that fits into a folder I use so much I laminated on my desk. That's cool. Is it something you have to purchase or they just have it in the like hardware alley anyone can grab? All right, so the next section, we need to assemble the hot end for this guy. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Oh, interesting. So they give you, they give you a couple options, it looks like, for heat breaks. Let's see. Okay, so here's, we're gonna go with the, I don't think there's gonna be an issue with our, with our non-Teflon throat for PLA printing. We're gonna start with this hot end and see how it goes. I, I don't really know how it's gonna go. But yeah, it looks like they provide you with two heat breaks. So there's a, one is in the, one is in the bamboo's memory? It's off the shelf, cool. I need to look at that then. That'd be useful to have in the garage. All right, so there's a bimetal heat break, which looks like it's all metal, which makes sense. So this must be the PTFE lined one. Yeah, this one's PTFE lined. You can you can see the PTFE there. I, I've printed tons with non-PTFE lined with PLA and it works fine. So it's more about, I think, the quality of the hot end and the machining of the heat break than the material. I, I know that like, I've heard some people love if they're just printing with PLA and like TPU, non all metal um, heat breaks. But again, I, I've never had an issue with it. So we'll take the, it doesn't say anything about putting any sort of um, thermal grease or thermal compound on here, which I don't know where that's at anyway. So we're just going to go for the best. Uh, has both SAE and, oh, cool. Uh, Imperial and metric sizes as well as pitch. That's awesome. I've had a problem where my Manta M8 PCB1 turns off when the, if, okay, if your Manta M8 PCB1 turns off when an end stop is triggered, something tells me it's wired incorrectly. And that when you're hitting the end stop, you're completing a circuit that's shorting something. 
or it could be defective. I, I don't know, but that's what it sounds like to me. Like if I had to guess, it sounds like that would be what's happening. Trying to find scissors, wire strippers. I miss having everything on the pegboard behind me. I'm trying to see if I can quickly find the Nipix. The small Nipix pliers. Oh, I'm Steve. I think the big ones are downstairs. Let's see, this is not it. This is not it. This is not it either. Okay, I found the big ones. Um, we'll quickly, we'll quickly check in here. Uh, try adding a cap to the wire. Never had issues with metal heat breaks. Apparently, I did get a metal heat break though. Not sure about those really cheap five dollar ones. Yeah. I think again, the quality is probably more important than the material. Cause I remember people using that as a selling point for sticking with PTFE lined hot ends. So, so for PLA, it's better. I, I just, I've gotten great quality with all metal and I'd rather have that than risk, you know, forgetting, oh, this, this printer has a PTFE lined heat break. Um, and then trying to print something that's not, you know, that's higher temp than damaging it. I'd rather have the all metal. This isn't, I'd rather have a little spanner wrench. I don't know where my tools are, so we're gonna see if I can just grip this. Yeah, that should be okay. Just tighten this. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so we've got that, and it says V6 heating block is what's going into it next. So V6 heating block for this little guy. Feels weird throwing a V6 on something. I mean, it's not really a V6. It's sort of like a dragon heat sink with a V6 style block. Uh, these, the set screw and screw head need to be facing towards the bottom so we can tighten our, our heating element and our thermistor. So let's just go ahead and, ooh, also, if I remember correctly, we kind of want, um, I think, if I remember correctly, we want this, because they're threading into the same section, it's been a minute since I've done this, um, I think that's about right. Previously, what I would do is I would thread the, like, the nozzle all the way in, then I would back off half a turn or so, and then tighten it into the heat break. But I don't remember if that's the right way or if I want it flush now. It's been a while. I feel like I'd rather have it flush, but I'm gonna leave it like this. Nozzle needs to stick out half of a winding. Okay, so that's right. Then I, then I was right with my thought process on that. So let's tighten again. <clears throat> Let me show it it's closer up. So I'm tightening nozzle all the way in, right? All the way, all the way, all the way. These are butted up against each other. Now I'm going to undo the nozzle with my hand, just half a turn. And I'm going to turn the heat, heat uh, break up into it. So now, it's got, if you look at the nozzle, it's not perfectly flush. It's got a tiny little gap, tiny little dip. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done, it's been a while since I've done that, but I, I was like, I remember there's something with the turning. Let me see if I've got a, um, I think I have like a little nozzle wrench thing somewhere. Most of them, most of them probably got <clears throat> lost in the move. Let's see. Oh, here we go. I think this guy works. I forgot I bought these on AliExpress a while back. One of my late night purchases, this little cross looking thing. Should fit right over here. Yeah, cool. I don't like that that's still spinning like that. I'm going to heat tighten this. Someone remind me the first time uh, you want to tighten the upper part of the nozzle to the heat break. Yeah. 
Otherwise you tighten the nozzle. Wait, wait. Do not bottom out either end. That's right. Okay. That's, that's the reason why. So if you, if you go nozzle all the way up to the block, when you go to tighten it, you're not actually butting up the nozzle to the heat break. You're butting, you're, you're basically tightening it up against the block, which leaves a gap, which can cause all sorts of issues in print quality as well as leaking out of it. So you want them to sort of go end to end like that. Um, I need to heat tighten this or hot tighten this once we boot up for the first time and, and, uh, and warm things up. So hopefully I remember that. Yeah, that's what it's right. Thank you for the reminder. That, that's the reasoning behind it. I'm going to try a bamboo hot end on my Chiron. I've been running the bamboo hot end on, on a V zero and it's been doing a pretty good job. Okay. So we can throw, no, we can't throw silicone sock on yet. We want, let's just do all of the, um, let's install the thermistor and the heater cartridge. So we're done completely with the hot end. Um, hopefully they provided it. Uh, let's see. This looks like not it. This looks like, this looks like the old stuff. I can't remember. I think this is the way facing forward. Um, I also can't remember if on which direction we want the wires to be routed. I'm pretty sure it slots in like this. Where do the wires route on this? That's what I cannot. Um, let me check on the stuff for manual really quickly here. Okay, so wires are going up the left side. So let's, let's have I believe typically, I believe typically I have the nozzle further inward based on that has to be, that has to be the correct way because if I go like the, no, I'm pretty sure that's correct. What is, so, so I need, I need a vote on this. Are we going nozzle, nozzle inward or nozzle outward? I'm pretty sure inward is how I usually run it. I'm working with the Big Tree Tech Pi 1.2 trying to get, wait, I'm working with the Big Tree Tech Pi 1.2 trying to get Octoprint to run, but I can't get it to connect to my Wi-Fi. Any ideas? Man, I haven't, I haven't played around with, you said Octoprint? I haven't played with Octoprint in a long time, so I'm not entirely sure. Nozzle inward. Where you blow against the block. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought as well. Inward hits the sensor. Inward hits the sensor. No, it should not hit the sensor. I think this is how it, I think this is how it goes. Well, that's a good point. Um, Bloody said too that if you have the whole thing inward, you're cooling excessive parts of the block that don't need to be cooled. So we'll go like this. <clears throat> oh, he's right. Inward hits the sensor. How, how does inward hit the sensor? I would think. Heat will radiate to the probe. I don't, let's see. Heater to the back. Okay, so we do, so you're saying we want the block in like this. Okay, we'll run it like this then. One of the things I never remember, granted I haven't installed this type of heat block, but I've done the dragonfly and I just can't remember how I ran it. 
Okay, we'll do it like this then. So let's center. Try to get this centered. <clears throat> The other way around. <laughs> Look for pictures. The heater, the front was after a tray. Okay, so we're, so we're doing what we originally were gonna do. <laughs> I don't see how the, the thermistor would hit. Oops. <clears throat> so we're going like this then. If we're mounting like this, this is sticking out the front like that. This is the direction we're going. <clears throat> okay. The original way was, was correct. I think I'm gonna need to clamp down on this. Yeah, I'm gonna need, <clears throat> I'm gonna need to clamp down a little bit harder on this. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to really clamp down on this block. I don't know if the, the heater, I don't know if the heating element is just a little bit narrower than normal. Okay. Hold with pliers. Part cooling looks like it's going to be very poor. Part cooling is not. Oh, you mean you're saying just with this particular hot end? Because let's see, part cooling on the stealth burner is not bad. Okay, that's plenty tight. Yeah, that's plenty tight. What's your thoughts on the Revo versus hot ends like that or the Dragon? I really like the Revo, but it's expensive. So. I like the Revo a lot. My biggest thing is I wish it was less expensive. I, I, I think it's a super convenient system. I like that it removes the possibility of leaking from the improper tightening because that's a definite failure point. It is, you know, not like, I mean, we just were looking at the nozzle and heat break now. And if you don't tighten it correctly, you can risk damaging your entire hot end. But yeah, I wish it wasn't so expensive i i know they've had some sales here and there now which has been nice and it's definitely a good system like i'm running it on a few i'm running it on a few printers and i've been really happy with it so i don't have yeah again i think just for for a more widespread adoption price is the biggest thing i feel that's holding it back and I don't know, like, I'm sure they have the reasonings. I don't know what R&D costs are like to develop it all. I don't know what their margins are like. I don't have any of that info. Um, but yeah, usually if there's one complaint I hear or see, it's related to price. And I, I, I understand, I understand it. Like, it's just not, it's not a cheap um, system, but it does work really well. My Revo first gen heater core died after like 10 hours of printing. That sucks. I know some people have had bad luck. I've seen a few people post on uh, Twitter about their heater cores dying. Knock on wood, I haven't experienced any of them dying yet, but it's clearly happening to some. Okay, so this is how we are doing this. Yeah, it would have been much harder to get the heater to fit that way. The thermistor wires will bend, bend a bit easier. Okay, hot end is built minus the sock, which we'll put on later. Kind of funny, it looks like you were intended to put the sock on 
before you inserted the heater cartridge. There's no way to loop it around. I'll, end up, I'll probably end up cutting, cutting these um, to fit it. <clears throat> it's a game changer when using an IDEX and tool changing. Um, what, what about it, Jack? I'm curious, because I the main benefits I talk about is, you know, again, just being able to quickly swap out things to different nozzle sizes, uh, having one system for everything, so for spare parts, just keeping one ecosystem, and no, and no um, leaking. But what's the benefit of with IDEX and tool changing? Having it center? I'm trying to think what it is. The hot end from the Pia Poly Manito looks really nice. Looks like it can do one-handed swaps and has dragon type mounting. I can give you all details about Revo. The, the long throat really helps retraction prevent drooling. Are the parts nozzles pointing at the heater block? Wait, are the part cooling nozzles pointing at the heater block? Uh, I don't think quite. Maybe? <laughs> um. Based off of based off of where the air is coming out, I don't think it's actually hitting the heater block as much as it looks like it is. It might be great. Oops, you can't actually see that, can you? It might be grazing the corner a bit, but based off of this angle, I feel like it's mostly going down to the nozzle. I don't think it's quite as bad as it as it maybe it's looking like on camera. Retraction, retraction suction for tool acts like a high. Yeah, the air is going down, so I think it's going to be okay. I need to see what you're talking about, Jack. Is there is there a video or has someone, have you seen someone using it, Fridex? Retraction suction for tool acts like a okay. So it just it doesn't leak. I guess in a similar in a similar way then to how you can retract, you can have the Revo retract before the hot end cools at the end of a print and then remove it when it's cold, right? Is it kind of the sim similar type thing? I think that's maybe what you're describing that you can do a big retract move maybe on a tool change and that gets the filament high enough away from the hot zone where it's not gonna be leaking. That's neat, that's pretty cool. All right, so we've got, we've got this. We are going to route our wires and we are going to get M316s. At what point am I tightening this? Is, did, I, did I screw up? No, I'm tightening it in the next step. Okay. M316. I don't know if I have, maybe these are M316s. Yes, they are. How much is the cyber kit? The hot end is a bit mad. Yeah, the hot end is mad. Um, I want to say when we looked, it was 370. It's been, it's probably been a month and a half since we've actually looked. Let me, let me double check. Cyber and wire. 359. So without printed parts, it's 359. Yeah, I agree. I think the hot end is likely the weakest point of the kit. It's as long as it works, it's better than what they had in their V0.2. But they, um, the Trident I got from them had a Dragon High Flow, which is definitely better. But I imagine the Dragon High Flow would probably add 40 or 50 dollars to this kit. 
So I think a big part of it is trying to make it where it's at least fairly affordable. <clears throat> I'm curious to see what the flow rate's like though, because it has a the nozzle, I didn't actually show it in this stream, but the nozzle I installed, it's a, it's a CHT clone, so, did I screw up? I didn't put, um, I can shove the Bowden tube in after, I think, but yeah, it's a clone CHT nozzle, and I haven't, I have, I purchased some a long time ago, I never used them, so I'm curious to see, we'll do some flow testing on it, just for fun. I do 15 millimeter retractions in end script and can change filament and or even nozzle. That's super cool. Isn't the air around the filament, isn't the air around the filament point unless we go. Isn't the air. Yeah, um, the top screws show the next step, Jose, which I thought was kind of weird. I feel like top screws should have gone in first, but <laughs> I was just, I'm just following it in the order. I mean, like, I assume someone that hasn't built it is just going to go order in order, but yeah, it has you attached front to back and then install those. So we'll do those now. Actually, I don't know if, I don't know if these are the right. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like in three threads. So we'll see how this goes. It also looks like, okay, so a couple things are an issue here. For one, <clears throat> these holes are not big enough for, uh, I don't think that these holes are big enough, unless I can, let's say I can shove them through. Yeah, I don't think that's, okay, let's take this off and see what's going on here. I don't know what the deal is maybe m2 yeah no i i agree i think I, I think installing two top screws is probably best but one thing that's kind of tripped me out here is it looks like there's m3 threads on this guy okay it's not m3 threads so that makes sense now here's the screws there's a little baggy it's like you said they're probably i don't think they're they could be m2 or 2.5 but yeah they might be m2 yeah, I think they're 2.5 as well. It comes with a tiny little... Um, okay, so let's, let's do this the way that makes more sense then. So, we are going to, before we attach the two halves... I also, the block is going to need to be adjusted, so I'm going to have to loosen this up again and retighten it because it needs to be aligned. So let's drop, drop screw number one in. Okay, that doesn't feel like it's lining up. There we go. There's number two. Okay, so... Yeah, I think I'm gonna loosen this really quickly. Oops, let's, let's grab this with the Nipix. Nope. There we go. Oh, wow, I cannot tighten that anymore. Still has the, see, it still has the ability to shift back and forth, which I don't like. 
So hopefully when we heat this up, I can tighten it down a bit more, but I don't, I don't really trust that seal between the heat break and the nozzle. I figured out why the CB1 was turning off. What was, what was the reason, Jacob? All right, back to where we were. Make sure the nozzle isn't tightening against the heat block. It's not, um, it's not, yeah, that's the way, I thought that it would tighten a bit harder, but yeah, it, it's, if you look, you can, Hopefully on camera you can see that. There's definitely a gap. So it's not, I'm not bottoming out the nozzle. I feel like it should be tightening a bit more. I think that part of it might be with this little cross guy. I'm just not getting enough leverage. I had, let me, let me really quickly check to see. I had a, um, <clears throat> oh, I had a longer nozzle tightening thing. Let's see, this might be it. I think I'm just not able to get enough leverage is really what's happening. Yeah, it's not the right size. So, um, one last thing I can check is to see if there's a spanner wrench. The... Too big. This looks too small. You no, know, I thought I found one. Could this be the right size? Winner, winner. Okay, so now I will grip you so you're not moving on me. This should hopefully let me get a little bit more leverage. Yeah. There she is. Feel a lot more confident in that now. Cool. So it was just, I wasn't able to get enough. I've used these before, they usually work fine, but in this case, when it's like, it, the, that bond is crucial. I, I wanted to make sure that I had nice and tight. Um, I had my wire color mixed and plugged wrongly. That makes sense. I, Cause when you said that every time it was homing or the end stop was triggered, it was resetting the thing. I'm like, it sounds like you're like a wiring thing. And when the switch is hitting, you're completing a circuit, which is, which is causing it to short. Uh, just got back from the store. Did you see the CHT knockoff yet? Yeah, we didn't look at it heavily. We didn't even look at it actually, but I, I showed it in a previous stream. Is that just a V6 clone? Yeah, it's basically a V6 clone. It has a, um, so the V6 block, I think that's probably a one-to-one. -one. Bimetal heat break, Dragon-ish style heat sink, and then a CHT clone nozzle. Tighten everything when hot, definitely a must. Yes, yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, please, um, I mean, I'm saying to remind me, so hopefully I just remember, but if anyone's here when I actually power this on for the first time, uh, I definitely wanna just get this thing up to like 240-ish and do one tightening down because when it expands, you really wanna give it one final, one final turn to keep things from leaking. Okay, last two screws. I'll try. <laughs> I, I won't hold it. I won't hold it against you. You know, <laughs> I just figure. So I do that to Aaron a lot. I'll say, "Hey, remind me," and usually just by saying "remind me," I'll remember myself. So hopefully, I'm not going to over tighten these either since they're just. 2.5s, I feel like I'll strip them pretty easily if I do that. So let's just get nice little hand tight. Okay. That feels, ah, get out. Those are some very nice looking drivers. These, uh, so combo, these ones are from Fabrico. Um, these are the Fabrico drivers and I like these. They don't have ball on the end, so you have to go straight on, but they, uh, they get really, 
Uh, for small screws, they're great. And they're really nice for tightening. My biggest complaint is that this grip is not very comfortable in the hand. And there's been a few times where I've had to torque down on something pretty hard and it, it, it just, it tears away at your hand. So for small screws, it's great. But for the bigger stuff, I typically prefer using these uh, Bondus cheap, cheapo, fairly cheapo drivers on Amazon. They're fantastic. They're um, kind of a rubbery grip. So I use the two kind of for different things. Okay, so next we need some PTFE tube. Um, and this should, this PTFE tube, if I'm not mistaken, is not intended to be guide tube. This we want it actually to be just back like once or whatever the, I don't know if they gave me, did they include PTFE tube? Is there, let's see, is there a little bit of PTFE up here somewhere from, Hmm. Um. Yeah, this is not supposed to be guide to. This is supposed to be actual, like, for the filament to feed. Um. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ding Cyborg for this because it was probably a me thing. <clears throat> but I don't know where in the heck that PTFE would have ended up, that would have been in this kit. So, hopefully I've got some, I've got some leftover PTFE somewhere I can grab. Most of the PTFE I have is guide tube stuff. Um, use some sandpaper to smooth it out. You mean the, the grip on the drivers? Let's see if I've got some PTFE over here. I've got right, yeah, you know what? I don't think this is, this is from the Trident, or yeah, this is from the Trident build. We'll use this. Oh, crap, you know what, do I even have, I don't even have a box, maybe I do have a box cutter. Yeah, I have this. So we're gonna use this, this is, from the Trident build. I think this kit probably came with some, um, but in the move, this box was open. And so something tells me, something tells me that it got just misplaced by me. Wow, this does not cut well. That's fun. I might have to figure something else out. Oh. Oh, <laughs> no, the exacto. Yeah, I might have to find different blades or something. So I'll probably, I'll probably hold off on getting the PTFE installed until I can find a decent exacto. Cause this is going to just be a mess. Stuff getting misplaced when moved never happened. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been using I've been using this blade to cut um, a bunch of uh, landscaping, like weed barrier stuff, and so it's just been being dragged through the dirt. No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> this is a great this this blade was super sharp, but I literally was cutting four foot long landscape paper yesterday. It looks sharper way back on the blade. Let's see if I go. I'll try cutting with the very back of it. Get it over the edge. Ooh, it is way sharper, way better. Okay, we might be, we might be able to do this. So let's see if I shove this in here, bottom it out. Do I have a sharpie somewhere? I don't have a sharpie somewhere. <laughs> do I even have a ruler? <laughs> I knew we were gonna hit a point where I'm like, where are my things? Okay, so we want 11 millimeters off the top. How in the heck am I going to, let's see. <laughs> Good call, Jack. Yeah, I guess I only cut with the very front of it. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can do this. It's not gonna be, this ain't gonna be pretty. It's definitely not cut, let's not cut my thermistor wires cause that will be the worst. We want, what did I say, 11? It's right about there. You know what I think I'll do? Okay, here's what I'll do. We'll cut it on purpose a little bit too long so that way it's not this crazy piece of... Okay, let's mark it like that. Let's move this out of the way. 
blade has to be off the table so I can cut down far enough. Hey, thank you for becoming a member. I can't stream element. Did someone, did someone gift members? I don't see, I don't know. If someone gift the memberships, thank you. I can't actually see, it just says some people I uh, gotta go get some sleep. Uh, see you guys next time. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Jose. Have a great night. All right. So I think we're... <laughs> this is so janky. Whatever. All right. Going here. Going for that 11. If I can just get it marked with here, there we go. Okay, so I can mark it with the ruler, then move this out of the way. <laughs> okay, let's pull it out completely. I got it, this is it, this is the way. We're cutting you like this, putting you up against the edge, going to the tiny bit of this blade that's still sharp. Oh, let's not hurt myself. There we go. Okay. So the good thing is, I at least know where this is at, and this is gonna help us. So, Steve didn't, Steve, Steve did make a jig for this, yes. <laughs> and I printed it out when we were doing the BZ build, but that was that was far too long ago for me to remember what, uh, what I did with it. <clears throat> okay, so I do at least have this little V bit. So we're going to twist this a couple of times, which should help us feed Oh, my mom and dad are taking Jackson for a walk. So we'll go like this. Okay, I feel pretty good about this. I think this will this will work well. Use a sharpie. Yeah, I would I would have used a sharp. Oh, for cutting that I was okay, but yeah, I wish I had a sharpie or knew where it was at for marking it. It would have helped, but we should be good with this. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How did that go? What the? How did that go in so far? That doesn't make any sense. What the heck? Unless I didn't insert it fully the first time. That should not be, that should not be going in that far. Ay, ay, ay. Well, you've hit the point of the stream where things get silly. <laughs> what the heck? I guess I, yeah, I must have not been all the way when I measured it. That's fun and I only have these silly needle nose pliers that don't gosh okay let's see can I shove an allen key inside of here Man, <laughs> I'm at a loss. Measure one cut twice. <laughs> That's pretty freaking funny. I purposefully left it long because I said, let's just give a little, let's see if I can grab it like this. I mean, it seems like it's, this is going to be scrap anyway, so I don't really care if I jack it up. I think I might have to take this thing apart. We need to look for one last tool. I can't believe that. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty surprised. <laughs> I feel like with the things we've encountered, I'm not surprised that easily, but <laughs> how did I, how was it off by 11 mil? Oh, there we go. Got it. Okay, let's try this again. So let's shove, shove this end. Cut this as flat as possible. <laughs> Use a knife tip to lift it up. We got it, we got it. There we go. All right, sharp powder knife, check. Insert all the way in. Ow. Okay, that has to be all the way in. Now we'll just cut rough, 
rough amount off. Um, let's just go somewhere right about here. Okay. Now let's mark, mark with the measurement. <clears throat> oh, you guys can't see what the heck I'm doing. I'm gonna see the silliness. Maybe turn the blade around, it might be sharper there. Oh, remove blade. I've never swapped the blade on this. Uh, gosh, <laughs> this is why. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. Look at that. We have a fresh blade. We were using the back when we had a full unused half of the blade. <clears throat> okay. Let's again not damage our thermistor and our heater. And let's cut right down. Okay, that looks really close. I'm happy with that. So as long as I didn't somehow screw up again <laughs> and uh, and this this PTFE disappears on us, we should be golden here. Let's see, where's the V-bit that I was using a second ago? Here it is. That's what I tried to say a while ago. Thanks for <laughs> yeah. it's just so smooth. <laughs> It's one of those things where like now that we've done it, I'm standing here like, why didn't we do this before? <laughs> it just wasn't, it wasn't obvious to me until, until I was told it. Okay. All right, and our PTFE is not disappearing. <laughs> we should be, we should be golden. All right. <laughs> that was awesome. Sweet, so we've got the bottom done, we've got the top done. Let's see if we can throw the faceplate together. Um, I won't actually assemble all of it together until next week, but let's see if we can see if we can get this, this faceplate done, or at least some of it. So if I remember correctly, we need flush cutters for this. Um, I think we can use an X-Acto as well, but let's do flush cutters, less friction. <laughs> Red makes it print faster. What's the red PTV? Um, yeah, it's it's red is what they shipped with the um, the Trident build that I did, and we never ended up using it. I think that they shipped me a little bit of white with this. Like I believe that's what comes with the kit. But in the process of moving, I have no idea where it would have ended up. I, things ended up in trashes. Things ended up in different boxes. So the red was the the one where I was able to just find it the quickest. Okay, so now we're cutting off the tabs on this. Hopefully not breaking anything. This these flush cutters kind of suck too. They're they're I use them for cutting things that no flush cutters should have to cut during this move process. Okay. Last one. Boom, and boom, okay, looks pretty good I think, I think the red is higher temp, I don't think it's higher, I mean it, it's, unless they're using a similar formula to what Capricorn comes with, I, I don't know that it's actually higher temp. <clears throat> Okay, remove supports. No one does what? Uses flush cutters for things they're not intended for? Okay, so we've got our LEDs, which the good thing is, is that the LEDs are already pre-wired for us. I'm hoping, I am hoping that the soldering job they did is decent, so they hold. I'm also hoping I can find them. Did I already bring it up here? Yep, I did. Okay. So here is our, this, and we need also a couple printed parts. 
We've got the um, opaque. And there should hopefully be. We got our opaque. I think I printed. Well, I don't know if I did. I thought for sure I printed out, um, I printed out a clear, I don't see how I would have lost it. That sucks. Well, that might be, that might be all she wrote then for today. I have to find where I put clear filament and print out the logo. I, I'm almost positive I printed this out when I first set up for this build. I don't, I don't see it. Bummer! Let's see. I was really hoping I'd get through this part of it as well today. Route the wires, cut the fan, pop the fan, and then basically assemble it. So, well, I guess that is it. Um, I've got to print out. I've got to print out the clear boron logo for the stealth printer, uh, and then I also need to print out the Batwing cover for the stealth printer. It just I'm not happy with the print quality, so I'll try it again on the K1 Max, and if it doesn't look good, I'll I'll figure something out. But yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I thought I printed out two of them as well, and I don't see a single one in this tub. Unless it's just somewhere. <clears throat> one quick little look. I don't see how it could have fallen out anywhere over here. It sucks. That's <laughs> really sucky. All right. Well, I guess that's it. <laughs> hey, Steve. <clears throat> I think we're gonna call it. I. I was hoping to get the faceplate done on the stealth burner, but I, again, I, I'm almost positive that I printed out one or two uh, of the Voron logos when I printed these parts out. So I don't know, I don't know how they wouldn't be in the tub of parts with everything else, but I've got to run around and find the one spool of clear PTG that I've got. Uh, and then I need to get it printed out. So next week, the game plan is we're wrapping up the stealth burner. So basically faceplate, attaching everything, putting the tool head board on the stealth burner and plugging everything in. And then we're gonna start wiring. So I, a lot of the wiring is going to be the stuff that's included, but because we're using the E3 EZ board, it's gonna be a little bit of a, um, it's gonna be a little bit of a mystery as to how it's all gonna go. So it'll be, it'll be fun. Steve, thank you for 21 months. And... Yeah, overall, I would say first stream in the new place went pretty well. I uh, I like... I have more depth, which is nice. So I don't... I'm sure you can tell, but like the camera is further away. Normally, the, the distance I have it from me and where we've been recording isn't actually by choice. It's just... It's the only space for the tripod to fit. I can even take the tripod back another couple of feet, but I think that'd probably be too far back. But yeah, we made some good progress today. We got our belts, belts are done, all belts are done. So we had the Y done previously. We've got X and Z done and tensioned well enough for now. We'll see how it all ends up going once we, once we actually start printing. We got the V6 Dragon Hybrid clone thing assembled. Um, and we've got the Clockwork 2 built and we got the hot end assembly built. So. Again, just faceplate, mounting it, plugging in a few wires, and then we'll start moving on to electronics, and that's really the meat of what's left, so. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. I appreciate you spending your Wednesday with me again, and uh, we had some laughs. We had some food talks earlier. I am going to, the one thing that I was requested, I think Nuno asked, you wanted the clam pasta recipe, so let me see. Um, clam pasta. I think I think I had to search because it's canned clam, so it's easier. Uh, canned 
clam pasta recipe. I think spaghetti with clam clams, 15 minute recipe. I wonder if this is the one I went with. It doesn't look right. No, there's no, there is white wine. That's what I forgot earlier, white wine. Spaghetti, olive oil, garlic, red pepper flakes, canned clams, white wine, lemon. I use lemon zest, not lemon. Butter, I don't think I usually use parsley parm. So this is nearly the same recipe. Um, but I'll find the exact recipe that I use and I'll post it. So anyone that's interested in the, the clam recipe I talked about earlier, I'll post that in live stream as well as the food channel a little bit later on. But on that note, I'm going to end it. I know Aaron works a bunch of days next week. So I have a feeling the stream is going to have to be maybe a little bit earlier, but I'll do my best to schedule it by, for streaming Wednesday, I'll have it scheduled by like Sunday. So that way anyone that wants to join uh, can do so. So uh, it wasn't me who asked, but I'll take it. <laughs> okay. I know somebody asked about it. Anyways, thank you all again for hanging out and hopefully I will catch you next week. Have a great night. Have a great day. Enjoy your Valentine's days and I will catch y'all next time. Hit like on the way out if you hadn't. All right. Bye everybody. Take care.